Okay, so now that we've been more informed about Kamala's history, I'm going to toss the second poll in chat. Okay, so the first poll I posted. Now there's more people voting now, so maybe things have changed. Because um, we have more viewers that might feel differently coming in. But earlier, 16% um, of people thought she was cool. Now it's down to 9%. 60% were kind of lukewarm towards her before. That's down to 43%. 24% hated her before, now that's up to 48%. I'm just kind of curious. Um, I'm just kind of curious in terms of what people think about her. So, I've kind of done this thing in the past that people have been critical of me for, where I kind of, um, I think I've picked a couple of, like, things that I think Hassan or other people have said about, like, Joe Biden, and I've said, I don't really feel like, I don't really feel like these points were made in good faith. I don't think the busing thing is quite as horrible as people present it to be. I don't think that the, um, I don't think that comment about the whatever uh, things are going to stay the same. I don't think that's quite as horrible as people are making it sound to be. I don't think he was saying it exactly that that way. And then most people are usually very critical of me because it's Hassan's job to do this investigative reporting um, and all sorts of stuff, and that I need to um, I need to give more credit to him and his reporting. So this video popped up on my feed before I got on the airplane. I hopped on the airplane. I listened to his video, and I um, and I um, and I went through the claims on the video because I was just curious, like how much of it was, you know, maybe exaggerated a little bit, uh, how much of it was completely correct, and then you know, was there anything in here that was wrong? And when I started to go through the claims in this video about Kamala Harris, almost every single thing Hassan says in this video is either dead wrong or horribly stretched um, out of out of what's actually happening. Um, almost every single point, and it, it actually was like really frustrating to listen to. Um, we can either go through it now, or we can wait for Hassad later and see if he wants to. But like, I guess to give, and maybe, and I kind of wondered after I went through it. After I went through it, I was kind of wondering like, am I like hardcore? Am I like anti Hassan? Am I projecting my hatred of lefty people onto the sun? Am I trying to just like, oh, I'm going to disagree with everything because I hate that? Um, and I really tried to look at it at like where I'm being like, I feel like, okay, am I being objective? Um, I don't know. It's really hard for me to tell. But like, for instance, um, I kind of wanted to go through and write down the claims to make sure that we don't like change them. Um, I don't care about cleaning credits. Um, so like here's like here's an example of like what this whole video is kind of like. Hold on. Why do you like Amy Crabclaw so much when she was a cop just like Kamala Harris? No, I hate Amy Klobuchar, and I certainly don't a -Y -A -Y -A. like Kamala Harris. The only candidate I like outside of Bernie Sanders, kind of, is Elizabeth Warren. Okay, first. All right, let's take a look at what Kamala Harris has done in the past. Okay, so like I'll just give you a sample. Let's we'll look at this first claim real quick. Past. Number one, she supported the law that forces schools to turn undocumented students over to ICE, separating them from their parents. And then so that 2008 law that forces schools to turn over undocumented immigrants to ICE, or undocumented students that forces schools to do it, I couldn't find any information about that. What I could find was a 2008 law that made it so that illegal immigrants that were charged with a crime could be referred to ICE. Now, you could argue is just being charged with a crime good or bad? Um, probably not good. Harris has come out and said that she wasn't in favor of it. But I think that's significantly different than schools just referring undocumented people to ICE, right? It's a little bit different when you talk about the fact that they had to be charged with a crime first. Apparently this came after an illegal immigrant who had been charged with, I think, two prior crimes had murdered three people. Um, so there was like a lot of pressure apparently to, to, to pass some tough on crime laws or whatever. But like, I noticed that there were a lot of claims like this that were, um, oh God, this is a bad reason to call this horribly stretched. Yeah, so I don't know, I don't know whose mind is more fucked, if it's mine or if it's yours or destiny. To be clear, schools gave up criminal immigrants. I couldn't find anything about that. Um, what I found was a law that said that if, if students, or and I'm sorry, I didn't find anything about students, but if somebody was accused of a crime then the police could turn them over to, um, then the police could turn those uh, people over to the uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Enforcement, But the idea that like schools are, are turning over kids, like for being undocumented, I... 
Your base can stop your inability to find this, though. Hi. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me... Okay, I'll be more clear. There was no law that said schools needed to turn kids over to ICE. It was the police department, if they arrested somebody that was found to be an illegal immigrant, that person was referred to ICE. Right? Do you think both are bad, but one is significantly worse? Or do you think what she did was fine? So I know that we like to play this game where, and, and I kind of like, I have to be like, um, I have to be really clear on how I speak because I know the desire is going to be to run the goalpost on this one. So one, I don't think that either was good. Harris has come out and said as much that she regrets, she doesn't think it was a good thing, one. And that two, um, it was a genuine question, fam. I don't trust anyone anymore when they say it was a genuine question. Um, and two, I do think it's bad, but it is significantly different to say people that are arrested and charged with a crime are going to be referred to ICE versus a school is turning over undocumented kids to ICE. These are two monumentally different things. They're both probably bad. One is much worse than the other. Much, much, much worse than the other. Did they have to be convicted of the crime or could they only be suspected? It was just charged with a crime. They didn't need a conviction, which is one of the reasons why it was pretty shitty. Do you think this video is worse than others? Kamala is one of the weirdest areas of left-wing extreme bias I've seen. It's not weird at all, though, if you preface this, and Hassan kind of does it for us, but if you preface this with the idea that people on the left fucking hate cops, and, like, that's it, then it becomes pretty easy to understand why they would go so far to, like, shit on her. But it, it kind of feels like this whole video is just, like, I really hate cops. Destiny. Click, um... Click Depolar's link. I've already read it. Um, I, I went through a lot of this on the plan. I went through a lot of different articles to try and read about this. This article doesn't disagree with me, though. Um, <clears throat> on the campaign trail in Iowa this past weekend, Harris made some questionable statements about a 2008 San Francisco policy that reported undocumented youth to federal immigration officials upon their arrest by local police. It wasn't schools just turning over undocumented kids. It was people that had been arrested and charged with a crime. So it's way different. I'm not saying that one is good and one isn't bad. I know that the I know that the um, the desire is like, well, Destiny, you think it's okay to just throw somebody over to ICE just because they were charged with them? Of course not. But these are incredibly different things. It's absolutely different. If you can't see that, you're lost. <laughs> you need to find your way again. Okay. Destiny never said it would. Just posted it as a source for the upon their arrest thing, which also means does not equal criminal. Yes, I think I've said that literally 15 times up to this point. I'll say it one more time in case you didn't hear me, which I'm actually I'm not even going to repeat it because I've said it so many times you should have heard it by now. Because <laughs> um, people that were charged with a crime, not convicted of a crime, which is why I said it was bad. I've said this at least five times so far. I wrote a little Google Keep pad down of all these claims. What's an example of something in that video that was straight up wrong? The thing that we just went over, that was straight up 100% wrong. It was 100% wrong. If PolitiFact was rating that, it would either be rated as a false or a pants on fire false. Schools were not referring people to ICE. It was people that were arrested. Undocumented immigrants that were arrested and charged with a crime were referred to ICE, not schools. It was absolutely an, an absolutely untrue claim, okay? If you think it was kind of true, I don't know what to say to you. This is my content is not targeted for people like you. Era law number two. She supported and funded a bill that would criminalize truancy, disproportionately harming single parent households, the poor, families of color, and homeless mothers. You guys all remember this? We talked about this. Lock innocent black mothers up for truancy. Kamala Harris. She did that. Kamala Harris straight up continued to defend that truancy. She continued to describe how she brought charges against a single right. homeless we mother of three who was working two jobs because her children were truant. And that was, in her mind, a success story. It is what we call the DA mediation program, where we assigned prosecutors to go and sit with the administrators and principals when they met with all the parents. And frankly, do you know the prosecutors in my office who volunteered to do this? My homicide prosecutors, my gang prosecutors. And they went over there and I said, when you go over there, look really mean. And so they did, and invariably the parents said, well, who's a mean looking dude? And the principal would say, well, that's someone that mean DA Kamala Harris sent over here because she said she's gonna start prosecuting you if we can't work this out. And through that initiative, we found cases like the case of the woman was by herself, raising her three children, holding down two jobs, and homeless. She just needed some help. But by shining this infrared spotlight of public safety on the fact that her children aren't in school, we were able to figure that out. 
give her access to services that exist. Guys, we sent a bunch of fucking horrifying looking dudes to scare the shit out of a homeless mother of three who was barely making ends meet. And guess what? Through that horrifying process, which is the only way we could have figured out that, you know, she can get the help she needs. And through that process, the attendance of her children improved. We dismissed the charges against her. And overall, we've improved attendance for this population in San Francisco by 20%. Anyway, like I said. So <clears throat> I'm going to take a big issue with the framing of this. We can argue whether or not it was good or bad. But the framing of this is basically that Kamala Harris is sending police officers to bully homeless people into sending their kids to school or else they're going to lock them up in prison, I guess. So <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about this. I would have to think about this a lot. But Kamala's stance on, on, Kamala's stance on a lot of the crime stuff was a lot of the reason why these kids are criminals is because a lot of it starts with the fact that they skip school. Right? They, they don't go to school. So the way that she tried to address some of these crime issues was she framed skipping school as a public safety issue. Right? Um, I'll read some quotes from her here from an LA Times article. I believe that a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime, Harris said in a speech to the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. Well, there's a little controversial in San Francisco. And frankly, my staff went bananas. She would kind of with a laugh. They were very concerned because we didn't know at the time whether or not I was going to have an opponent in a race. Um, Harris took the advocacy statewide, sponsoring a 2010 law to make it a misdemeanor for parents whose young children miss more than 10% of school days a year without a valid excuse. So this isn't for kids that are sick. This isn't for, um, you know, kids that, for whatever reason. But basically, if, you, if your kids just weren't going to school, that the parents could be held liable. Parents could be punished with a maximum $2,000 fine, up to a year in county jail, or both. Violators of law could defer judgment by participating in regular meetings with school officials and improving their children's attendance. So this part of the speech that Hassan clipped from Harris is a little bit misleading. What she was basically saying was that by having prosecutors there, by having it look like you were going to face serious repercussions as a parent for not sending your kid to school, hopefully it would encourage parents to work more with school officials and to utilize the resources that were there to get the kids to actually go to school. Now, you, I mean, like, so we can argue whether or not this is a good or bad thing. I don't know how I feel about it. I have to think about more. But, like, the idea that... Um, the idea that that we're like just sending cops to bully parents, poor, hopeless parents, into sending kids to school, um, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't see anything different, to be honest. Um, hmm. Uh. Get the help she needs. And through that process, the attendance of her children improved. We dismissed the charges against her. And overall, we've improved attendance for this population in San Francisco by 20% over. Anyway, like I said, uh, you wait, 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 hold on one second, one second, one second, one second. Okay, Fane won. Um, and. Uh, Edas, if either of you can email me um, something in that article or something in that link about schools referring children to ICE, I'll unban you, okay? You know my email. Good luck. All right, let's replay this. Who was barely making ends meet. And that her children aren't in school. We were able to figure that out. Get her access to services that exist. Guys, we sent a bunch of fucking horrifying looking dudes to scare the shit out of a homeless mother of three who was barely making ends meet. And guess what? Through that horrifying process, it, which is the only way we could have figured out that, you know, she can get the help she needs. Welcome to Sweden. Hope you have a great time. Where do I go for the meet and greet? Um, I'll let you know when I figure it out. And through that process, the attendance of her children improved. We dismissed the charges against her. And overall, we've improved attendance for this population in San Francisco by 20% over the So, I mean, whether or not, like, it's a good policy or a bad policy, right? Like, Hassan is presenting this in an incredibly fucking loaded way, right? We're going to send 
prosecutors to homeless women, shake them down, and threaten them for, um... <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on. I have to make this. Will you make a setup video ever or an updated setup? Blow. Uh, someday I will. Okay. Um. Hold on. If you're just gonna come and be like insanely anti-cop in my chat, go to some other chat. I don't care. Okay. I don't. I don't give a fuck. Um. But yeah, I don't. I don't think the. Um. I don't think the framing here. I don't think the framing here is very fair. Right. Kamala's goal was to, to boost attendance in schools, which is a good goal, right? Kids should go to school. I think we all can agree on that, that kids should probably go to school. That's step number one, right? And then step number two is, we should, you know, <clears throat> if you threaten parents with legal action, is it possible that you can get some parents more motivated into sending their kids to school? Um, I mean, we can argue whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'd probably lean on the, on the side that it's not necessarily a good thing. But I mean, if it does end up boosting attendance, if there weren't a lot of people just being randomly convicted and fucked, you know, for no reason, I mean, <clears throat> um, and then the statements following this are really, really stupid. Anyway, like I said, uh, using a Gestapo force to uh, threaten homeless people and uh, talking about that as a... Would you agree that sending cops to people's homes is kind of like bullying and scaring parents? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I mean, like, the idea to get your kids into going school to going to school is, like, really important. Like, let's say, for instance, here's something. I wonder if I could get anybody to concede this. Let's say you had parents that just straight up didn't give a fuck that their kids were going to school or not. Do you think that if you could motivate them using the police force to send their kids to school, that would be a good thing? Or do you think in that case it would still be bad? Just don't let the kids go to school. Let them flunk out. Let them deal drugs. Let them be crimes. Do crimes, whatever. Do you think it doesn't matter? Or come on, be honest with yourself. Destiny, why dick ride her? I'm not dick riding her. Oh, man. You can motivate them in a different way, my dude. Yeah, of course. There has to be more reasonable ways, sure. But Kamala Harris is a is a district attorney. A like resounding success. Very cool, Kamala Harris. Very cool, Kamala Harris. All right, here's a video of Kamala Harris talking about uh, how uh, criminal justice reformers are unrealistic and ideological. This idea that, um... Oh, he was going to say it after this. This idea that, uh, what about other ways to bolster people? What about other ways? Kamala Harris is a DA. She's not a legislator. She's not, like, what, how is she going to do other things, right? As I would expect a DA to use police in order to, like, move, you know, society in some way. That's pretty much all she can do. <laughs> like, this idea that Kamala Harris is, is going to go to Congress or whatever, write legislation as a district attorney, I don't understand that at all. Um, I mean, she could sponsor bills, I guess, if she feels strongly about them, but... Destiny, I went to shit school where the cops would give the parents tickets. They wouldn't send cops to parents' houses. I, I don't know if they actually sent cops to parents' houses here, but, um... Destiny, why are you talking... Why are you taking what she's saying as necessarily true? She could be mischaracterizing her policy work de facto. Um, if she was, I didn't find anything about it. Um... So I'm reading more of this LA Times article. With children missing significant amounts of time from kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and no one paying attention to doing anything about it, we were seeing eight-year-old kids having their futures carved into stone, which was just tragic, said Mark Leno, who wrote the bill when he was a Democratic state senator from San Francisco. I guess, like... <clears throat> I don't know, I guess it's frustrating for me because like when we talk about like kids are fucked in school, we need to do something and people are like, well, you can't blame the teachers, okay? A lot of these kids are fucked before they even get to school. A lot of them don't even come to school. It's like, okay, well, let's make the parents send the kids to school then. Fuck, that should be like a bare minimum, right? Like I'm of the mindset, maybe because I'm a parent, maybe it's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit different for me, but like, damn, if you can't even send your kids to school, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck is wrong with you? One, why the fuck did you have kids? Sure, people fuck up, I guess, okay? But like once you have them, like damn, at the very least, you gotta try to get your kid to fuck at school. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what the hell? That's like, damn. And if the difference between a cop, you know, scaring you into sending your kid to school is the difference between him going or not, I mean, fuck it. Harris and her allies have said that the law's purpose was to prod school districts to provide resources to families of truant children, not to lock up parents. But the Huffington Post reported that several counties in California arrested, charged, and sometimes jailed parents under the law backed by Harris. In the Bot Save America interview, Harris does herself from that approach. My regret is that I have now heard stories where, in some jurisdictions, DAs have criminalized the parents, and I regret that that has happened, she said. And I thought that anything that I did could have led to that, um, because that was certainly not the intention, never was the intention, never was the intention. So, I mean, I guess we could say that, like, um, maybe her intention was that she's actually evil and she always wanted to lock up parents or whatever but i mean she had other democrats that supported her on the law the idea was to get kids to go to school um i don't know i, I mean 
I think that you can take issue with her law. Um, I think that you can... Um, oh, hold on, and step. I feel like sometimes, I feel like when a lot of the like left-leaning people in my chat argue, it feels really similar to what the alt-right guys would do with the IQ stuff, where I would start, where I would make a point, and then they would machine gun out like 7 million links to me. Why do you guys keep linking me this PolitiFact article? It doesn't disagree with anything I've said. Have you read it? Or is this just stuff you've seen linked on like your lefty discords, and you're like, if I just throw this link at them, it wins the argument automatically? Like, I don't understand. My, my, so for the first claim, the idea that schools referred kids to... Um, to, to ICE is just not true. And you're sending me a link that agrees with me. A 2008 San Francisco policy that reported undocumented youth to federal immigration officials upon their arrest. That's not with the school, it's by the police department. Destiny, it's the headline. The headline is Kamala Harris tries to rewrite history with false claim on San Francisco's ICE policy. This has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Was there an age limit to this law, like 16-year-olds weren't affected? I imagine the truancy probably affects kids up to where they're legally required to go to school, right? Like 16. Destiny, should a DA be trying to fix the education system at all? Like, is that part of that job? Well, so Harris's argument, the thing is, is that, like, I don't even know if I agree with it, but, like, I feel the same way, like, when I was dealing with, like, fucking conservatives, right? It's not that I care whether or not um, how you feel about a particular issue. I just want it to be a good discussion, right? Um... It's not a good discussion to say, Kamala Harris is just sending the Gestapo police force to arrest parents that are homeless. That's not, like, that's, not a, that's not a good framing of that. The question is, is if Kamala Harris can encourage more children to go to school by threatening legal action against parents, um, then, in, then in that case, um, I mean, that's an interesting discussion to have. It's not one-sided. You can pretend it's one-sided, but it's not. You can argue the pros and cons of both of that. Um, again, I, I don't know, I'd probably fall against it. That would generally be where I would, but there's a much better framing of that than like sending the Gestapo to homeless women to bully them and send them, make their kids go to school, that was to lock them up. Like, <clears throat> Destiny, why do you keep saying threatening rather than enacting legal action? They are very different. They did file charges and jail people. They weren't threats. I don't know if you know what a threat is, Man, holy shit, you guys blow my fucking mind sometimes. Um, I don't know if you know what a threat is, but you can follow through on threats sometimes, right? Like, if the DA is threatening legal action, is my response going to be, huh, she's only threatening it, she's not actually going to file it. I don't know what you mean when you say that. Like, they threaten a lot of legal action, some of them they probably prosecuted. Yeah, of course, that's what the article we just read was. I, I don't understand what you're... It's kind of weird to make a law that you have no plan to enforce and then get disappointed when other people enforce it. Maybe this is coming out of criminal justice, but it intuitively feels wrong. I know that it intuitively feels wrong. Man, fuck. I feel like I've changed so much when, when I look into like policy making over the past five years. Because I used to be way more idealistic. Like, oh, well, this should be like this, and that should be like that, and that should be the only thing that matters. But it feels like it feels so much more complicated than that. Um, the idea that like I feel like some people, I, I feel like the like the um, I don't know how to say this without something um condescending but like the innocent way the innocent way to look at it is like um the innocent way to look at it is like oh they're gonna use the cops to lock up poor parents it's horrible right that's like how you want to look at it right the reality though is kamala has a public safety problem a problem with locking people up you know sending them to prison which we all agree is bad her way to fix that maybe or her way to combat that is to keep kids in school which we all agree that's a good thing and then her way to do that is to use the police force to threaten parents with charges for truancy if their kids miss like 50 days in a school year or some shit right um we can argue about whether or not that's a good or bad policy it seems like it boosted the amount of uh, the attendance by 20 percent. i think she said um i don't know how many people were prosecuted now, real quick, I will note though, because it's obvious to see where people's um, where people's loyalties lie. You know, people in the chat are like, "Well, she actually did prosecute some people." Okay, sure, but like, um, but prosecuted who? Like, let's say, for instance, um, if they miss fifty days, more like ten. Why hyperbole? Wait, hold on. I thought I read fifty days in the article. Um, which one was it? Um. A San Francisco DA from 2004 to 2011, Harris issued citations to parents whose children missed more than 50 days of school, but none of them were put in jail. 
She called truancy a public safety issue, saying high school dropout. Oh, this is what she did before she enacted the law. And then the law was going to be, I think it was 10% of school days a year without a valid excuse. So how many school days do you go? How many school days in a year? So 190 days. So if you missed, if you had more than 19 absences in a school year without an excuse, so without being sick or whatever, then they would, yeah, then they would, I don't know, I guess, threaten you with a fine or jail time or something, I guess if it was extreme. Um, I guess this is kind of weird to me too, I don't know, because I went to private school. In private school, if you had an unexcused absence, you got an instant detention for that. I think it might have even been an all-day detention. You had to come in on a Saturday or Sunday. But um, I don't know what public school is like. Um, if you just skip a day of school, do you not get in trouble for, for an unexcused absence? Um, we would get in-school suspensions. I think, uh, yeah, that's what we would get. You'd have to come in on a Saturday or a Sunday and you'd have to spend eight hours at school. If you, um, if you, no, not at all. You guys could just skip school? Damn. I, I went to private school, so maybe they were a lot more like animal than that, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, like, um, I, I mean, like, we could take issue with whether or not it was a good thing or a bad thing, but, I, I mean, the cause is noble, I think. Getting kids to go to school is really, really, really important. It's really fucking important. Um, kids that skip school are, are more likely to be involved in so much more worse shit than kids that actually go to school. Um, whether or not using the police is an effective means of doing that, I don't know. Kamala Harris is the DA. I don't know what else she is supposed to use. I wouldn't expect her to work with teachers, I guess, as a DA. It's not her job. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't like, I don't like this framing that like, oh, she just went and harassed like homeless people. I think it's a really disingenuous framing. Um, I can't, I am, but I can't tell how many people in chat just hate cops, <laughs> but okay. Not more important than someone's freedom. So again, um, your freedom is, is subsistent to the, the, the ability of your child to succeed in life. That's actually like how the law in the U.S. works right now. Um, for instance, this is why men have to pay child support. Your freedom doesn't mean fuck all it, uh, um, more than the, than the freedom of your child, you know? Um, like, we, we already agree with this. This is why we make parents pay child support, even if, they, even if they got tricked into pregnancy or some dumb shit like that, because the state is more concerned with the well-being of the child than any adult being wronged, you know? Um, I guess we can, yeah, we could say whether or not Destiny, with a little foresight, can we not agree that the truancy shit was going to affect mostly persons of color? That's a big reason why people had a problem with it. Well, yeah, of course, but I don't know if it's bad. I don't know if that's bad that it's going to affect persons of color, right? I mean, if persons of color are the people that are having the most trouble, like sending their kids to school or getting their kids to school, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to motivate that group of people the hardest to send their kids to school? Like, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, if it works, it works. Are schools not mandatory in the United States? They are mandatory. Yes. <laughs> yes, you have to go to school in the United States if you're under, I think it's 16. But, yeah. Destiny. It is bad because persons of color structurally really tough problems for their kids going to school because of societal conditions. Sure. But, like I said, I think Harris's goal was that if the parent... Like, okay. <clears throat> if you... Here is some interesting... Here's an interesting question, okay? I'm really curious... And I'm not trying to put you guys on the spot, but I'm curious if there are a lot of cases where, like, innocent parents that were really trying their hardest ended up getting locked up under this law. I'm really curious. In Spain, you can lose custody of your child if you don't send it to school. Sure. I'm pretty sure you can in the United States, too. I think if your kid is skipping school and you're not doing about it, anything about it, I'm pretty sure CPS can be referred to you, right? Destiny, does the policy make any exceptions like parent illness or extreme financial hardships? Yes. Yes. That's why, that's why the policy, hold on. So, <clears throat> Harris took it that advocacy statewide sponsoring a 2010 law to make it a misdemeanor for parents whose young children miss more than 10% of school days a year without a valid excuse. I guess we could argue what valid excuse was, but I'm really curious if there are like, if there are these stories of all these poor parents just being locked up because they couldn't get their kids to school and they were really trying their hardest. Like, it feels like the point of what Harris was doing was to get these people resources um, in, in order to get their kids to school. So like, against her, and overall we've improved attendance for this population. This is what her quote was about here. Hassan is making it sound like she's happy that they sent the Gestapo to her house. Hold on. Fine looking dudes to scare the shit out of a homeless mother of three who was barely making ends meet. And guess what? Through that horrifying process, 
it, which is the only way we could have figured out. It's the only way she can. She's the DA. What else do you expect her to do but use the police force? That, you know, she can get the help she needs. And through that process, the attendance of her children improved. We dismissed the charges against her. And overall, we've improved attendance for this population in San Francisco by 20%. Over that, so like, I don't know. M maybe I'm crazy, but that sounds like a successful application to me. It sounds like she used the police force. She confronted a parent that was having trouble getting her kids to school. The parent was able to get some resources from the school, as she said, and then she boosted the attendance of those kids in school. That seems like a positive, and all the charges against her were dismissed. She didn't end up getting charged with anything. So it seems like that seems like a, a positive application of the of the law there, unless we really just hate cops. <laughs> like, I don't know. Is she right, Destiny? Did her policy work despite what she said? She says that attendance was boosted twenty percent. I don't. I mean, it's possible she's just straight up lying about that. I didn't assume that. It's possible that she is lying about that. Um, so. <clears throat> Leno echoed that sentiment, saying that the law explicitly stated that before law enforcement can use this new misdemeanor, every available attention must be brought to the student and the student families. Everyone must join hands to find a way to get this child to class. Robert Demps Dempsey, an assistant district attorney in Tulare County, said he recalled Harris twice presenting the truancy law at meetings of the state district attorney's associations. She recommended imprisonment for truancy only in the most extreme cases, he said. Dempsey said he could recall three parents charged under the law in his county. All the cases were settled without jail time. Still, he said, prosecutors could pursue jail time in circumstances when the school district is doing what it can to assist the parents, but the parents are doing nothing in return. I mean... Again, like, you know, is it a bad way of, of using the police force? I don't know. I think there, I think there's like a good, um, I think there's like a good, I think there are good arguments you can make on both sides of this, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like his, um, I feel like Asana is a more baseline distrust of the use of police and legal violence to enforce social goals than you do. I guess, sure. But I mean, we can just like look at the, we can just look at the outcome. Man, I really, really regret uh, I really regret all my previous tweets about hating cops. Um, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have done it so much. I don't think it's good to just blanket hate cops any more than it's good to blanket hate um, a a anybody. I don't think it's a good thing to do. I think there are a lot of shit fucking cops in the U.S., and I think we have institutional problems with cops in the U.S., but it really blinds you to seeing like anything in an objective manner when you see a cop and you instantly like hate every single thing associated with them. I don't know. I think it's a really bad way to go about evaluating a person, but... Like I said, uh, using a Gestapo force to uh, threaten homeless people and uh, talking about that is a resounding success. Very cool, Kamala Harris. Very cool, cop. How useful is it to throw the poorest in society in prison or give them fines they can't pay? It's something that's just going to make them and their children's situations worse. But that doesn't seem like what it was. First of all, the goal is always to break the cycle, right? You want to break the cycle of poverty that people are stuck in. A really good way of doing that is to make your kid actually go to school. If you can find a way to push people into actually making their kids go to school and to largely avoid jail time doing it or fines doing it, that seems like a positive application of the law. And it seems like it was boosted that 20% of um, that 20 of people, um, the, the, the attendance rates were approved 20%. I'm quoting Harris's number there. Maybe that's not true. Um, she gave the example of one person. She said that overall attendance was boosted 20%. Again, she I'm taking her word of that. Maybe she's making that number. Uh, but um, honestly, this is what the police should be used for. Community engagement and betterment. People just have a bad taste in their mouth with police and persons of color. Yeah, sure. Destiny, let them go to school and pile up $100,000 in debt. Pu you don't pay for public schools out of pocket like that. Oh my god, that's wild this thing. Destiny, you always say to use extreme examples to see if an argument stands. So what do you think about a state using the police force by threatening jail or other punishment to achieve certain goals? Couldn't that lead to dangerous paths? Um, I mean, if you're talking about, like, using the police to ensure that, like, kids are going to school, I mean, like, of all the applications of police, if I could, th if I could think of, like, five different places, I could send a cop down to the corner to crack some kid's head for fucking dealing dope. Um, you know, I could have cops raiding houses, you know, serving warrants, looking for fucking marijuana. Um, you know, I could have cops just patrolling streets looking to fuck people up. Or I could use cops to force kids to go to school. I mean, I feel like the fourth one would be, like, the best application of a police force that I could have. But... Yeah, or cops, you know, stopping and frisking people, like, 
Kamala Harris. All right, here's a video of Kamala Harris talking about uh, how uh, criminal justice reformers are unrealistic and ideological. Okay, so I say with all love and warmth <laughs> that part of the concern also for people who, um, who are progressive thinking and liberal-minded, or just progressive thinking in terms of just fix it, fix it, is that we all have these posters in our closet that is attached to a stick that we sometimes will cart out when we're talking about criminal justice policy and those statistics that you first heard when we opened it up, incarceration, and we run around. Destiny, with that logic, then we should use police on people who don't feed their kids healthy food. Okay, here's a question. Let's frame it a, let's frame it, let's frame it a little differently. Do you think that we should use the police to motivate children, um, parents to vaccinate their children? What if the end result was 99.999% of people I mean, so I, I mean, like, it's not like it's not like we necessarily disagree with with every single possible application of police force to motivate people to be good to their kids, right? We use child protective services as well. If you abuse your child, we use the police to get you to fuck off, or we take your kid. You know, if you severely malnutrition your child, malnourish your child, you can lose your kid as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could use the police to justify a lot of policy that we deem valuable. Should the police be used to force people to vote, for example? I mean, you present that as really extreme. But believe it or not, there are countries with compulsory voting. Destiny, there's CPS for that. You don't need to send down homicide and gang defectives. Who do you think shows up after CPS does if you don't respond to CPS? I mean, that's like saying, like, we don't use the police to make you pay your taxes. That's what the IRS is for. I mean, <laughs> not to mention oftentimes, like, CPS will show up with an officer depending on the reason why they're called to the house. Has Hassan such anyone on this side said what should have been done to deal with currency rates? Who stands in to put pressure on the parents except the police? I mean, I could think, I don't know how it would play out, but like maybe financial motivations would work better there. Destiny, sounds like we need to get rid of CPS then. Ooh, sounds like you're a huge fucking piece of shit. If you let kids get raped and abused in their fucking households, that's good for you. CPS definitely has problems. There are definitely parents that need to lose their fucking kids. But I mean, hey man, what if, again, oh, okay. I understand the idealistic world that we like exists in our minds, but, oh, anyway, I don't remember what I said before. There are countries that force you to vote, right? I don't know if you know that or not. What is CPS? It's Child Protective Services. Um, in, like in Australia, you have to vote, right? If you don't, don't you pay a fine or something? Destiny, not homicide and gang detectives. There's a difference between setting an officer in case of non-cooperation and an officer to intimidate. Okay, but again... Kamala said that these were the people that were volunteering for the work. I mean, like, you're giving this the worst reading? We could probably spin this into a lot better of a reading, too. I don't know without interviewing the officers, though, right? Like, you're saying, like, maybe homicide detectives, they volunteered because they're the meanest motherfuckers. They want to go down, and they want to fucking bully parents because they know how badass they are, right? It could just as easily be that homicide people are the ones that see the most disgusting, nasty fucking shit on the streets, that see 16, 17-year-olds getting their fucking guts eviscerated. Maybe they're the ones that are the most motivated to talk to parents and be like, hey, if your kid doesn't go to school, he might be the case I'm working on next week, right? Maybe that's why they volunteer. I don't know. I know that you don't know, right? But I mean, like, it could go either way. This idea that, like, it was the toughest cops that were volunteering, it, it made it sound like it was, like, partially motivated by the fact that they're the ones that work these cases. When these kids don't go to schools, when they get rolled up in gangs, when they end up dead on the street, that these are the people that are working those cases, you know? He was clearly talking about CPS as a first measure. All Kamala says is to tell the schools to try their best first. That's what you tell CPS is to try their best first, right? The first measure, you're not supposed to threaten um, jail time until all school options have been exhausted and the parents aren't responding, right? So what about incentives, my dude? Like financial incentives that would do 100% better for the economic outcome of those families. Sure, that might be good, okay? Why did Kamala choose the most brutal and dehumanizing way possible? First of all, brutal or dehumanizing? Damn, we're loading it. Holy shit, we fucking hate cops here. Um, but Kamala can't do that. She's the DA. How is she going to get, first of all, she wouldn't even run a program like that. She's a district attorney. What do you mean? She's not going to be giving people money. That's not within her power. The only thing she controls is the police force and, and prosecution, like, for the state. It, it's not her way to, it's not her ability to give parents money to send their kids to school. That's not, uh, her, that's not what she can do. Cop apology at destiny. This is why MLK talked about the white moderate law. Maybe this can be talked about after we reform our broken criminal justice system. It feels like sometimes, like, Man, oh fuck, dude! I feel like every day I feel like I empathize more and more with with politicians. Um, nobody wants to do anything about anything ever, right? Like, okay, 
kids are fucking up in life because their life is fucked. Okay, well, maybe we need to do something about the school. Okay, we need to punish teachers that don't fucking help kids. We need to figure out a way. Well, it's not their fault. The kid, sometimes kids don't even go to school. Okay, well, fuck it. We need to fucking punish parents. We need to figure out a way to motivate parents to get their kids. Okay, well, what about, we can't use cops because we gotta reform criminal justice. Okay, well, fuck, I guess we need to fucking reform our criminal justice. Okay, well, you can't do that because there's still socioeconomic issues that divide people. It'll never be fixed. Like, okay, well, fuck, I need to get, I guess, like, it's like you can never do anything because there's always like 50 million other problems that like you can't deal with, you know, like, Holy shit, like you, you have to start somewhere, right? You have to start doing stuff where you can. Kamala Harris is the DA. She can't pass some comprehensive bill to pay parents to send their kids to school. She can't pass laws that are going to be like, she can co-sponsor bills, right? Like the only thing she has control of is the police force. If she uses the police force to get kids to go to school, I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world. Sure, like it's Destiny, but the law only enforces kids being at a certain location at a certain time, not to ensure the child benefits. You probably benefit. <sighs> Single-payer health care doesn't actually ensure you better health care outcomes. It just ensures that you're at a certain place, a hospital, at a certain time during your appointment. Do you realize how stupid that sounds? People fundamentally hate responsibility. Yeah. You have to draw a line somewhere in terms of what a DA should and should not be involved in. The types of issues should have been outside of Kamala's purview. Let's say, for instance, like, let's say that you are a DA. Let's say that you're managing cops that are having 17-year-old after 16-year-old after 15-year-old getting fucking killed on the fucking streets. You're working. You have all these fucking homicides. Another fucking teenager has been killed. And you're like, okay, how can I use my police force to make my city a safer place? Which is ideally what the police force is supposed to be. Now, if you're a lefty, the police only exists to further serve the interests of capitalists, whatever dumb shit you believe in. But, like, ideally, the police force is, is hopefully supposed to exist to make our communities a better, safer place. It's supposed to be the idea. Um, so if you can use your police force in a way that gets kids going to school or gets kids um, or, 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 or gets parents to send their kids to school, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. I'm saying the way it is enforced doesn't guarantee a benefit. Risk reward is not proportionate. I think getting kids to go to school is good, but I, I don't know, man. Maybe destinated watching the wire make you more sympathetic towards cops no actually it's been digging into issues has made me more sympathetic towards policy makers and like i i start to see like um i guess i see like maybe a lot of the old idealistic thoughts i had you know on like there were so many issues that i just wanted to be one-sided on i still think there are some one-sided issues like single-payer health care i think is an inarguable issue period but like really complicated like geopolitical things like imperialism right the united states needs to stop intervene intervening in all foreign affairs it's like well hold on is that really is that really the best idea like in all cases you know what about in cases of you know extreme humanitarian problems we don't intervene where there are humanitarian problems only in u.s interested humanitarian problems um, right now but what about in cases where um other people are helping uh one side of a conflict right let's say that we say that we're not going to intervene in any foreign countries anymore let's say that um let's say that turkey right starts to experience backlash in their country because the um the, the PKK, let's say the PKK starts getting funded by uh, Russia and China. Do we still take a non-interventionist policy? Do we watch our ally fall, right? Do we just watch Turkey, you know, crumble? It's like, yeah, fuck them, dude. We're not, we're not interventionists anymore, you know? Um, <clears throat> now, I'm not saying that interventionism is good or imperialism is good. I'm just saying that everything is so insanely complicated. Like, it's, it's so much more complicated than just saying, like, oh, we just should never do this thing, you know? People are saying, how about financial incentives for poor families to send their kids to school? I don't think Kamala Harris can do that. That's not her job. She can't allocate funds like that. Destiny, no one is saying don't involve in foreign affairs. A lot of people are very against U.S. imperialism. No one is I'm not talking about foreign aid. Well, I'm talking about like foreign like like aid, like training or soldiers or military funding, right? Like. Even in those situations, you don't intervene. If a country wants to act on moral things or big problems like that, they should have to do it through the U.N. Sure. Well, maybe, but I don't even know how that would work. How could how could the UN? Um... Here, okay, I'm super curious. Okay, Here, here's okay. So here's here's a question that I have. Okay, in Southeast Turkey, there exists a group of Kurdish people called the PKK. Generally, I think these people are thought of as extremists. Generally, Turkish people fucking hate these Kurdish people. Okay, let's say that America has a new policy where we're not going to intervene in foreign countries. Okay. Let's say that the PKK starts to get funding, training, and arms from Russia and China, and it starts to cause significant problems for Turkey. In that case, let's say we go to the UN and we're like, hey, this is bullshit, we're going to intervene. 
And well, Russia is also on the Security Council and Russia vetoes everything like, no, fuck that. We're going to just chill. Right. What do you do in that case? Then the USS funds Greece to take them out. Based on what the HuffPo article, Kamala didn't even start the process of punishing parents for truancy. She just made the school and DA work together through the whole process. Let them die so they can have the moral high ground, declare World War III. Destiny, if the U.S. stopped all intervention, then a power vacuum would arise and someone else would start intervening. Yeah, the, the, when I, I never really considered, like, I never really considered influence vacuums. Um, really just an argument for reforming the U.N. <sighs> I love all of you so much. I wish it was so simple. I really, 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 really wish it was more simple than this, okay? So you guys say reform the UN. What do you mean by that? Do you think on the Security Council, do you think that those people shouldn't have veto power with a single vote? Because maybe, because that sounds reasonable. Should like China or Russia be able to single-handedly say we're not gonna do that? Okay, sure. But then you have to think, well, hold on. Why was the UN created? Why do these people have veto power? The reason why is because these are the nuclear powers of, of this day and age. You want to avoid conflict. The reason why so much veto power exists on that Security Council is exactly the reason to keep countries from getting into direct conflict with one another. We want people, right? So maybe you take that veto power away and now the UN begins working against other nuclear power, right? Like, you, you, you just, it's so, I'm sorry, like, I love you all so much, but it's so much more complicated. Um, it's so much more complicated than just saying like, oh, like, um, we should just not do any of that anymore. Wouldn't that be so much better? And it's like, uh, the Security Council isn't just nuclear powers. Um, the, I believe the five permanent members of the Security Council are just nuclear powers. And then I think there's four others. It's nine altogether, right? That rotate, right? I think. If you don't give large players vetoes and they don't agree to join the UN in the first place, just having dialogue between countries is a massive plus. Dialogue is very, very, very good. Yeah. I, um, I started thinking about this a lot more. I don't know, you probably saw my opinions if you watched my stream for a lot change on this. Um, initially, I was very much against the TPP. Um, um, because, because of all the random like corporation power shit. Um, but then when the option became like, do we reform the TPP or do something with it or just bail completely? And then I saw the outcome of that. I was like, okay, well, we actually, in the TPP, there were a lot of provisions that we had to fight um, to fight against China for the copyright stuff. And when we left, all of those provisions got scrapped. And, and so now it's like, well, fuck, Did, was that a good idea that we left that? Um, also, the U.S. had much less sway, well, no sway, over how that multilateral trade agreement was negotiated um, when we just left. And when you look at like the United States withdrawing from agreements like that, and you look at China trying to insert itself in as much of the world as possible, um, yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, I, it's it's so much more complicated than just saying just saying no and leaving and lolling. You know, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Is currency not generally legal in the USA? In Canada, slash most of you, the parents get fined. Sometimes the kid goes to juvie for a night or something. I'm, yeah, currency is illegal in the US. You have to send your kid to school. Yeah, you do. Yes. Wait, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Is it illegal to skip school? In the US, under the age of 16, you have to go, um, you have to go to school, right? I, I feel like I've heard this my whole life. I guess I've never actually like looked it up, but I'm, I'm like almost positive that's true. In large schools where law enforcement officers are present, the fine for playing hooky can range from $250 to as much as 500 about 12,000 students were ticketed for truancy in 2008 in Los Angeles. Many states provide for the appointment of local truancy officers who have the authority to arrest habitually truant youths and bring them to their parents or to the school they are supposed to attend. Many states also have the power to revoke a student's driver's license or permit. Children are required by law to attend school until they reach a certain age, which varies by state, typically 16 to 18 years, unless the absence is formally excused by a school official or the child has been expelled. As for the truancy thing goes, I only wish there were better academic programs to help solely reintegrate students back into school. And if they don't go into those programs, perhaps the legal action is necessary to some extent. It's a tough issue as someone who is involved in the system. Sure, but yeah, everything related to school is so complicated because so much of what makes schools work is completely out of the hands of the school, you know? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's continue on. With these signs, build more schools, less jails. Build more schools, less jails. And we walk around everywhere. Build more schools. We protest. Build more schools, less jails. Put money into education, not prisons. There's a fundamental problem with that approach, in my opinion. And it's this. I agree with that conceptually. But you have not addressed the reason I have three padlocks on my front door. So part of the discussion about reform of criminal justice policy has to be an acknowledgment that crime does occur. 
and especially when it is violent crime and serious crime, well, there should be a broad consensus that there should be serious and severe and swift consequence to crime. So Kamala Harris, uh, it's kind of crazy. This, this liberal notion that we want to build schools, not prisons, doesn't address the real problem that violent crime does happen. Thanks, Kamala Harris. I guess you need to be a, a, a draconian prosecutor for us to understand that crime does actually, indeed, as a matter of fact, happen. Uh, you know, fixing socioeconomic problems and increasing uh, opportunities in education does tend to lower crime statistically. Okay, I don't know what he means by this. What is Kamala Harris supposed to do to fix socioeconomic opportunities? I mean, maybe he's just being, I guess, if I'm more charitable towards Hassan, maybe Hassan is just saying that, like, um, in general, these are better things than just using the police force, which I probably agree with. Or no, I would definitely agree with it, for sure. Um, but again, like, I do, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not a full-on lefty. Um, Hassan is calling you, hold on, let me finish my this video. Um, like, the idea that, um, <clears throat> the idea that, um, but when I hear people say things like we need to abolish all prisons or we need to get rid of like all police or like all cops are bad, it's like, I mean, you ha you do have to realize that there are like two sides to the issue, right? Like there are, there is some level of crime and some, and I even wonder sometimes when I listen to some people, like there is like some level of crime that like actually does exist that you do have to address. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be able to go through the rest of this. <sighs> okay. I have to be quiet. I can't scream, but dude my dude arena what's up um i hear that you're fucking why do you like pissed just fucking pissed why do you like amy about my uh kamala harris uh video yeah i guess so people always get critical of me because i always like call you out for like a random bernie bro or not bernie bro um a biden bro fact or not bro i don't know what i'm saying bro a random like biden thing and then um people say that like uh, you know i'm just cherry picking issues or whatever so this video about kamala harris came up in my feed and i was flying on a three hour flight and i had nothing to do so i actually watched the whole thing and i tried to read into every issue and i feel like this is like a really really one-sided not fairly presented video <laughs> um what do you mean um i don't know do you want to do you want to just walk through it i guess um Sure, we can do that. Uh, or are we can address like your main points of uh, contention and then walk through that individually. Yeah, um, sure. My, my perspective is like, look, here is my, my main summarization of Kamala Harris is that uh, she was originally put up as basically like Hillary Clinton, but black. And uh, she has like a similar background, obviously not as nefarious or as awful. There's not as many like memes about Kamala Harris or whatever that have permeated through political discourse for decades, but still um, uh, she is largely um, like, she's largely over prosecutorial and, uh, and has kind of gone back on a lot of the things that she says on the debate stage immediately after she walked back her statements about uh, Medicare for all twice now, I believe. And then um, some of the things that she's advocated for don't, don't make sense when considering uh, her, her track record, like on, uh, sex workers, for example, which is why I, um, which is why I think like Kamala Harris also is uh, not necessarily great. Oh, another thing that she walked back uh, that was uh, similar to what Joe Biden had said, even after that uh, Joe Biden conversation was like the day after. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she said something that was like, um, like literally, uh, nearly identical to what uh, oh, she thanks, criticized uh, you, for Joe Biden when Joe Biden did it. Okay, I understand that. Um, but I, I, so I, I don't know all these claims. I would have to go through like each of these. I'm more curious about like just things that were said during the video. Okay. Um, I, and by the way, I'm totally uh, willing and able to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. uh, if I've got some shit wrong or whatever, like perfectly, perfectly reasonable. It's a, a live stream. Yeah, sure. It's probably not my best. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see where we wind up on this. So, like, on the first issue, um, hold on. Are you able to turn it down a little bit? I hear an echo myself. It just makes it really hard. Oh, shit. Talk. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Uh, is that better? I mean, I'm, you know me. I don't have fucking headsets. So. No, it's fine. Hello? Yeah, hello. Are you, are you talking or? Oh, nope. Oh, testing one two one two. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I don't hear anything. Yep. Now. Okay. I'm waiting for you to. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the very first claim that you open the video with. 
Hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, we gotta focus. I still hear the echo, but I can talk through it, okay? I just need to focus hard. Okay. The first claim that you made in the video was that schools were referring undocumented students to Immigration and Customs Enforcement. There was some 2008 law that she'd written that did that. Um, I don't think this is I don't think this is true at all. It, it had to do with people that were charged with crimes, right? No, the main distinction is that uh, the main distinction is that if you are arrested, you immediately get uh, sent ties. over to authorities. This mm -hmm. was a Gavin Newsom uh, regulation. I think I mentioned that in the video as well. Maybe I didn't, but sure. But uh, she, you, there is like there's a she not only she not only defended it uh, after that point. But that was like the specific reason for why that uh, regulation existed, uh, because the previous, uh, in previous instances, they had not cooperated with immigration authorities as, uh, as uh, San Francisco is a sanctuary city. So uh, her statements on how she did not know that uh, that's what the law intended uh, are disingenuous. Sure. Okay. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about. Uh, yeah. I'm not talking about. Know. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the idea that schools were referring children to ICE because they were undocumented is far different than the police department was taking people charged with felonies and referring them to ICE. That's two totally different things, right? Um, arrested without a trial is the main point there is, like I said, the main point I, uh, I was uh, hammering in is that uh, the main point that I was hammering in in that uh, situation was, again, that it was a reversal of a previous procedure uh, in which they did not do that. Sure. I'm just, I'm just, I'm focusing on that, the, the start. Are you, are you upset at, like, my framing or something? Because I elaborate on it uh, quite, like, I mean, I elaborate on it immediately after. Well, I, well, I understand um, the elaboration, but what I'm saying... Maybe what... this might be a, a, an issue with the fact that I... Uh, what do you call it? I use a, a Twitter thread to like, which had gathered all of these ideas uh, quite well together. Things that I already knew about, but um, what I'm saying but, is uh, the claim that schools refer undocumented children to ICE is not true. It's the police department that refers undocumented persons that are charged with a felony, not convicted, but charged with a felony. What did Those... I say there? I don't even remember. Can you, that, what was my exact statement there? That schools, I, I honestly don't remember. It sounded like schools were just referring children to ICE for being undocumented. I linked the video. We can go through the video if you want. What? Yeah, we can go through the video. Sure. Um, where was it? What point was it? Um, well, here, I, I linked it. I don't know. Let me link, or let me listen one second. Kamala Harris, let's take a look. It's on tonight on HBO. All right, let's take a look at what Kamala Harris has done in the past. Number one, she supported a law that forces schools to turn yes, guys, over ice, fish is in the cone. from their parents. It's, because, it's for his own good. Okay. Yeah, so it was at 41 seconds. Maybe you misspoke here, but you said that she supported a law that forced schools to turn kids over to ICE. Which sounds really bad. Like, holy shit, like an undocumented kid just at a school just gets referred to ICE. It's horrible. But it's, it was more with people charged. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I didn't say anything. Um, I didn't say anything wrong there at all. Uh, that was That is the same policy we were talking about. Okay, I, I thought that I, like, misspoke or something. Um, yeah. Uh, so you're saying that... Um, you're, you're saying that what, like that, uh, that never happened or something? No, yeah, that's not that. No, it didn't happen. That's not the thing. Oh. Like as in, um, uh, as in what, like that, that schools uh, were the, never um... forced to refer children oh, to oh, ICE. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Wait, hold on. Let me see what I said one more time. ECH. Lied about, uh, she lied and claimed that she didn't know that that was what that law was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, okay. So here is the, uh, here's the exchange, exchange that it comes from, uh, like with the uh, Iowa politics podcast, which I mentioned there as well. Can you give us some insight on how from that time when, from whatever reason you were supporting this policy that was essentially handing over undocumented people to ICE before they had been convicted? Are you saying that, the uh, the the part of that that you're saying that never happened is the fact that juveniles were uh, unintentionally also being uh, are you saying that like juveniles were also being unintentionally uh, separated from their families or no what, is what the... I'm saying is that the law said 
is that if you were charged with a felony and you were an undocumented immigrant, you would be referred to ICE. It had nothing to do with schools referring people to ICE. Schools had nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess I, uh, I, I guess I misspoke saying schools were uh, responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, fair. Okay, uh, maybe because you saw the word juvenile, I, I would maybe I would assume that that's schools because of juvenile, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. But um, <clears throat> but I continue on that point as you probably saw in the video where I talk about how. Um, this was a policy that she uh, absolutely defended. Maybe not the school part. Mm -hmm. uh, Chan said dozens of wait. Chan said dozens of, dozens of juveniles between the ages of like uh, 12 and 18 were reported to ICE each month, both on felony and misdemeanor charges. And some kids were actually deported as a result of that policy. Um, so, so kids were actually deported uh, as a result of that policy. I guess the difference is that you like the school. Wasn't the one, uh, are you saying that the school wasn't the one that was reporting on it? Well, so like, do you understand, like, do you know where this law came from, what the motivation was for this? Um, yeah, the motivation is, uh, fuck, what was the, the uh, something happened where uh, an undocumented immigrant killed someone and Gavin Newsom was the one that, uh, uh pushed for this policy is the... Yeah, I think it, I think yeah. it killed like three people after he'd already been charged yeah, yeah, with yeah, crimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the goal, yeah, the, so the goal was a tough on crime approach, which is usually pretty stupid. But the goal was basically that if you were yeah. charged with a felony as an undocumented immigrant, you could be preferred to ICE. That was like the point. Um, but yeah, I guess my point okay. was that, yeah, that it didn't have to do with like the schools. It, it, yeah, that's, that's it. It had nothing to do with schools. Schools weren't involved in this at all. Oh, okay. Um, so that was the, uh, so that was what you were upset about. Okay, yeah, it was, it. yeah, it was people um, charged with a, with a, fel well, I think I'm pretty sure it was with a felony. If you were charged with a felony that you were referred well, to. Well, I and, mentioned that. I mentioned that after, like, I literally mentioned that in the video that you're talking about, just for the record, mm -hmm. I, I do talk about the fact that the kids, uh, and, and every single person that was charged were never actually investigated and, uh, and, and immediately given over, handed over to, uh, the federal authorities and that, um, some people, wait, and that that was the unintended consequence, uh, according to Kamala, who said that that was the unintended consequence of this policy, when that was the main consequence of that policy. Yeah, that was. So, it seems like the stated so goal. So, like yeah. for me, for me to say like schools were reporting it, is that the part that you're upset about? Like that she. Like, yeah, because like, that like, sounds. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a huge difference. But. Okay, but school children were literally. Uh, school children were literally deported for misdemeanors because of that without being charged. And Okay, and if I have a cop that goes and kills students at school, would it make sense for me to say that schools are killing children? Wait, what? Sorry, can you repeat that? I'm... If a cop goes if to a school killing... and kills students, would it be the same for me to say that students are being killed by schools? Does that make sense? No, right? but... but... Is the school is the school uh, calling the cop to fucking actually go and purposely kill uh, the student? Because in this instance, if they are reported for a misdemeanor, they would the school reported the uh, to the police force for a misdemeanor. That would literally be uh, yes. That would the school would take part in that. Um. I, I, wait, 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 I don't understand what your point is there. No, I don't think the schools are resp I don't think that it's the fault of the schools, which is precisely why I'm saying uh, that's an understandable uh, confusion that could come across. Like that's that's confusing on my behalf. That's why I admit. Wait, but you just made it sound uh, like it's confusing. the school's fault. You just made it sound like the school's fault. It was the school's fault partially for getting kids deported because the school called the police if there was like a crime being committed. I, I'm I'm admitting that it's wrong. I'm admitting that the um the the confusion is on me. But I also then followed up with, I didn't realize that it was going to be um, uh, this big of a, like, I, I didn't realize that this was something that uh, would be uh, that big of an issue, especially considering I literally go uh, went forward and explained, like, how Kamala Harris literally fucking uh, uh, played a part in this and then changed her perspective and lied about uh, what she had defended in the past. Sure, those are bad, but, like, one way, you, like... You can present two people. One of there these is, people there is, is like a talk on under crime these circumstances. people. Uh, I understand. Outing, outing undocumented immigrants or cooperating with authorities goes in, goes against the um uh, goes against what had happened. So unless it was like a literal fucking rape or like an actual serious felony that a person saw, 
and then uh, went after, which from what I understand, and maybe I'm incorrect on this, but like it was literally like misdemeanors and shit um, uh, that, uh, what do you call it? It was like literally misdemeanors and shit. Yes, the school still uh, plays a part in that. Okay, but the school itself... Also, God, it's so fucking frustrating. Oh, God, I can't read your fucking chat. Oh, my God. Like, instead of... It, like, this is, this is genuinely a problem where we're having, like, we're having a semantics argument over uh, something that I admit is uh, probably could have been worded better. Mm -hmm. and, and then that is enough for so many people to be like, oh, Hassan is a fucking incel. Like, there's people in your chat saying, like, Hassan's incel is showing. And it's so fucking annoying that the, you guys are supposed to be my fucking allies that... that you would be so critical and so uncharitable in this circumstance just because Destiny is like even looking at this from a critical perspective. This is something that really frustrates me. Sorry, I'm going to calm the fuck down. But it, 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 it genuinely, it, it is genuinely infinitely fucking. All right, whatever. Okay, so. Okay, I'm I, saying I, the schools are complicit in what was going on. Um, I, but, but I probably should have uh, not started off with like schools are uh cooperating with authorities even though they were well no um, no no no, no. Uh, schools are cooperating with authorities schools are supposed to cooperate with authorities i, I mean i, I would ex i would i don't think i would want to send my kid to a no, school no there are that... plenty of places where no there are plenty of places where the schools are literally not allowed to cooperate with authorities that's the entire law destiny like in wait, wait 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 stop stop stop, stop, stop. please please stop. not please supposed stop. to cooperate with please. authorities okay you got to stop okay hello not cooperating with authorities isn't the same as not turning kids over to ICE. You understand that authorities also means like normal police officers, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, wait, wait. wait. So understand. schools generally cooperate with authorities. I don't mean refer people to ICE, but generally, if there are kids like murdering each other in school or some shit, the schools will usually call the police, right? Yes. Do you think that the kids were murdering each other in schools? I don't know. And that. I well, just, I just, I don't know what you mean when you say, I don't know what you mean when you say historically schools don't cooperate with authorities. I, no, I, in a sanctuary city, schools are literally not supposed to cooperate with authorities. Uh, in in this instance, I mean authorities specifically ICE. Uh, uh, whenever, whenever like a misdemeanor or some shit occurs. Okay, wait. Do you, you understand? Police departments you, are not supposed to cooperate with yeah. federal authorities okay. as well. Do you understand? So that under do you understand? There is a huge difference between what you just said. Wait. Do you understand that there's a huge difference between saying that a school doesn't refer kids to ICE versus the school doesn't cooperate with authorities? There's a huge difference between those two things, right? Wait, schools uh, still have. Fuck. Can you repeat that again? Is schools cooperating with uh, authorities? Generally, we want all schools, all schools in the United States, should absolutely be cooperating with authorities. Absolutely. Now, we don't probably want sanctuary city schools cooperating with ICE. Those are two totally different things. Yes. But if the but if if children are literally getting fucking deported for misdemeanors without due process, then I would say that the schools are still kind of complicit, especially because we're talking about misdemeanors. Okay. First of all, okay, my understanding. Felonies. Okay, my understanding was that it was felonies. Um, Don't you think that? Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Don't you think that this is a fucking like pedantic kind of dumb conversation to have? on this point because I feel like you are literally expanding upon it because functionally what I said is not even incorrect despite the fact that I'm saying that I could have probably I could have probably mentioned it in a in a uh, more charitable I guess fashion and and then the entirety of the conversation is not about whether like schools are doing this as a consequence of the law but the entire conversation is actually about Kamala Harris lying about her perspective functionally the schools were still complicit in um, in, in juveniles being charged and being deported for misdemeanors. Okay. Um, do you not understand that there is a massive difference between a school just preferring undocumented citizens? Un hold on. Oh, God. It's so hard to figure the echo. Hold on. Okay. There is a huge difference between a school just referring to children that are undocumented to ICE for no reason versus police people doing it when a char when a person has been charged with a crime there's oh those okay. two things are right. hugely I, I get it a little bit more now all right you're uh okay yeah you're right let's okay. uh, let's move yeah i okay, should have okay. said schools were i said i should have said schools instead of hold on what did i exactly say One second. i think you said schools referred them to ice 
like the law forced schools to report immigrants to ICE. Like one of those is evil. Like if, if Kamala really forced schools to turn over undocumented kids to ICE, that's insane. What did they go through like the, like all the registry to find every undocumented and turn over? That's crazy. Undocumented it, immigrants without a, I should have said undocumented immigrants without a uh, due process to ICE. Would that have been better? No, but it's not the school doing it. It's the police force doing it once the person's been charged with a crime. Uh, okay yeah um okay uh, uh what what would be a better way to word that in your mind well that just that, that what it said that police were being told to refer um undocumented persons to ice if they had been uh, okay uh not convicted but charged for the crime got it okay okay <laughs> okay. okay let's keep going um, do you think that that is the most important, most significant part of that, uh, of that fact or, uh, when I hear somebody other... say, when I hear somebody say that, hold on. Um, okay. When I hear somebody say that, um, they've made a bill that makes it so that if you're charged with a crime and you're an illegal immigrant, you get referred to ICE. That sounds like some bullshit ass tough on crime bill that you like, it's probably bad. You probably should be. Wait, wait, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you look through like every part of this, by the way? I know that we said, let's move past it, but did you look through every part of this or? Yeah. What do you, what part? Yeah. What part? No, no. I'm saying like the, um, like I, I, I closing parenthesis. Like, there are, there are officers within schools. There are still like authorities within schools. And to my understanding, if I'm, and I might be fucking totally mistaken, but um, the previous, the previous uh, thing was that youths were only reported to federal immigration authorities if they convicted of felony, but- No, not convicted, um, just charged. What? Not convicted of a felony, no, just charged. Destiny, why are you not hearing the words I'm saying? I said the previous, okay. um, the previous uh, rule of the land, which is an understandable and reasonable oh, okay. one, is that if you were convicted, of a felony, then yes, you were uh, resorted. I mean, you were sent over to federal immigration authorities, mm -hmm. and um, sorry. And then, uh, despite the uh, sorry, Newsom vetoed legislation. The board had enough votes to override his veto and pass the law without a signature. Despite this, Newsom re refused to follow the legislation and ordered the city to continue reporting undocumented juvenile suspects to ICE. So, um, so. Like func not only just functionally, but like school uh, school authorities were literally uh, still participating in um, uh, in cooperating with the uh, federal authorities, like with with the immigration authorities. For people that were charged with a crime, not just going through. When you say again, the difference is if you have somebody that doesn't. Oh, okay. So you you're you're he, upset he, that he, um, he, he, you're upset he. that I. I should have, you're upset at the thing that I elaborated on further in like the next couple of seconds when I mentioned that this was, uh, uh, this was something that changed the previous law, which I just mentioned to you. Right. And, and that, that I mean, that was literally like, I mentioned, uh, further context right after that. It's not about the context. It's the idea that the statement was that schools are referring juveniles to ICE. That's not really true. It doesn't really capture what's going on. It's people that are charged with a crime are being referred to ICE. These are two totally different worlds. Okay. But I literally followed that up with context right after. The context doesn't change anything you've just said. You make it sound like Kamala basically passed a law telling schools Have to start referring all school? undocumented to people private? to... Um, to, to ICE. That's no, what it sounds like. I talked like. about how if someone was charged with a crime in the past, that's the only, uh, uh, if someone was charged with a crime and that was the main difference, like that's literally, that is the context that you need. I, I don't understand. I mean, it, by the way, consequentially, they're not different. Functionally, they're not different. They're absolutely uh, it, different. It, it, how? How, like if a school, if a, if an officer that is planted at a fucking school is literally uh, like uh, an officer that's planted at a school is literally fucking, um, uh, contacting federal authorities because he's like, oh, there was someone uh, here that was charged with a fucking crime, then yes, the schools are literally fucking uh, uh, 
like they, they are participating in this. They are complicit. So should the Follow schools them. have kicked out like, all the police officers? So should the should the schools have kicked out all the police officers then? Um, that would be one way of doing things. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, we can move on to the next thing, I guess. Um, the trans Wait, why, why are you just laughing and, and saying we need to move on? Because that's fucking. Uh, that's so fucking point. stupid. What do you mean? You you just want to kick all police officers what do you mean, out of? What do I mean? Do fucking schools need to have cops? Everywhere? Some of them like, do. Yeah. Schools? What the fuck kind of statement is that? Yeah, of course some do. What do you mean? What? Do you, you, what? <laughs> why? Cops should not be in fucking any schools. I feel like I've heard you debate people um a million times over about how uh, like it's kind of fucked up that we have cops in schools to begin with. What the fuck? I Wait, feel you like you really went to I feel it? like you went to a really nice school and and you have no fucking no, idea like how I dangerous some places. Okay. And in really fucking shitty neighborhoods as well. We never had cops. And in plenty of places in almost all of Europe there are no cops in fucking schools. This is crazy. It's like mind-boggling to me that Americans like legitimately believe that we need police officers inside of schools. Okay. And um, I heard you say that it's fucked up that we have police officers inside of schools. I, I don't remember the context. I don't. That we literally have police officers inside of schools that were operating as the school authority, uh, also as the police officers that were working with federal authorities. They're not, not operating. Why do you keep saying school authority? They're not operating under school authority. They're borrowing them from the police department. These aren't like cops that like the school like takes on their trains and runs under their own policies. These are people that follow the policies set by the DA. There are cops that are stationed in schools, but they're not like the school's cops. They don't like own them and set policy for them. Okay. All right. Just for the record, though, nowhere else around the world and in most places in America, I'm fairly certain that they don't have cops in schools. Yeah, but in other places around the world, they, their schools, schools don't get regardless. fucking... They, they said it in other places in the world, schools don't get fucking shot up like ours do. <laughs> it's a lot different. What? In other schools in the world, they don't have fucking school shootings every other fucking day like ours do. Like... Yeah, I mean, it's a relatively recent thing, but I'm um, sure. What we're talking about is like 2009 when like school shootings had happened not as frequently as it, they do now. Uh, okay. Wait, when was anyway, Columbine? Look, the reason why, the reason, <laughs> look, the, the reason why they have like, um, like the reason why schools, uh, like ha the reason why schools have these cops to begin with, like they could absolutely substitute it with a fucking security officer if that was uh, what was necessary. And yes, I, I don't, I'm not backing down from my sentiment that, that yes, it is bad that schools have police officers. Okay, so then your goal... It's fucking nuts. How could you say that it's a... It's like a... How could you say that a decent learning environment or how could you defend the notion that the decent learning environment has a literal police officer that at any given moment could, like, lock up someone and, and play a part in the school-to-prison pipeline? I mean, they did this with ICE in Long Island as well, by the way. Not just Kamala Harris, but, like, they straight up yoinked under Donald Trump. They straight up yoinked fucking kids that they deemed were a part of MS-13 um, exclusively because of like t-shirts they were fucking wearing or things that they overheard them say and literally deporting them. So, you know, it, it's pretty fucked up. My position is that no, they shouldn't have police officers in schools. And even if you have police officers in schools, they should not cooperate with fucking ICE. So do you think it would be fair to say that if um, somebody was arrested in a mall for stealing by like a mall cop, that it was like an actual police officer would you think it'd be fair to say that malls are referring undocumented immigrants to ice is that like a fair statement um if malls had if malls had like uh cops and that the wait, wait i'm uh, if I, malls, I would use a different if malls had cops and sometimes those cops arrested people and then the DA had a policy where if you were charged with a um if you were charged with a misdemeanor or a felony you were referred to ICE if you were undocumented would you think it's fair to say malls are referring previous, undocumented well, immigrants all, malls are still public so it's a little different i mean i would i would consider like the school to be a um i would ho hold uh, the school to a higher regard wait hold on i no 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 no, no, no. that's exactly malls. backwards malls are private and schools are public um okay i'm saying that I'm saying that I still, regardless, okay, I might be wrong on that distinction, but I'm saying that I would still hold a school in, in a totally, totally separate way. Um, I, I would think that having police officers at a mall is way more reasonable than having police officers at a school or a place where public, the public congregates is an understandable place to have police presence. Where, whereas 
um, the school having their very own resource officers, which is a separate distinction from a fucking police officer, given the fact that like resource officers have, I'm fairly certain, go through different sets of training and like, uh, and and are not like they're not operating as um, like full blown fucking uh, state troopers, basically. Uh, that that yeah, schools should not need to have them, and they shouldn't even have them. Wait, do you think school resource officers never refer children to police stations for, like, crimes or whatever? You don't think no, that ever happens? of course happened? they do. Of course they do. I'm saying that that's bad across the board, and and certainly when you understand that those people might get fucking deported. I, um... I, I guess I just... I, I don't understand, so... You're saying that you shouldn't have any police or resource officers at your school at all, otherwise the school is complicit in what the DA like census policy is that well my my opinion which i uh carefully mentioned in that after the state statement is that it is a bad policy and was uh countered quite rigorously which gavin newsom didn't care for which kamala harris literally defended and then lied about defending sure and or, it was probably a bad policy because they were referring people to ice based on charges and not convictions that's the bad part but it has nothing to do with schools referring children to ICE. Schools didn't do it. It was it had to do with police charges. No, I, I, I agree that it was a bad policy because they you could throw out due process and fucking uh, and, and kick out children uh, from this country. Yes. Well, I don't the, know if it's about throwing out due process, but like it's it, it's well, the, uh, charging someone is different than a conviction, right? Yeah, but they're not like, being convicted of a crime. They're being deported for being an illegal immigrant. I understand. And I don't, obviously, I have a problem with that, uh, regardless. Sure, if but I'm saying that has nothing to do with, crime, but that, but that has nothing were, to do with due if process. They actually, if they were actually, okay, if they were charged and they had due process and they were uh, deported after they were convicted, then, yeah, that's a Wait, completely no, understandable situation. No, 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 hold on, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. We can have a conversation about no. that. That's a separate conversation. I don't, but, I don't know what but, due process means to you. So due process, like means that if you are charged with a crime, right, you have a right to a public and speedy trial and all that shit, that's like due process. If you're referred as an illegal immigrant under current U.S. standing law, you can be deported for that. That is, there, there, there is no due process needed for that. We're not violating yes, due process. Yes, and we all, we all operate with that understanding, which is why they, at no point uh, should any, any institution that is, uh, any institution that is tasked with educating kids should be playing a part, uh, willingly or unwillingly, in the deportation of juveniles without even a fucking uh without even uh, their day in court yeah but, that was well, my no no that wait there is no point. wait wait and i think wait, that's your point as well no no what there is no day in court for an illegal immigrant to fight being an illegal immigrant that's not the due process we're talking about why do you think sanctuary cities exist like why do you think this regulation existed that gavin newsom wanted to overturn well the regulation well, sanctuary cities exist because a lot of their population, I mean, it's, there's a whole host of reasons. You don't want people that are living and contributing to your city to feel like they're going to be fucked by the cops at any time. You don't want to discourage people from reporting crimes, especially sex crimes. Um, maybe you don't want to um, cooperate with authorities for political reasons because people don't believe in, you know, the ICE and all that dumb shit. I mean, there's a whole host of reasons. What do you mean? I, I, I know. And that's precisely why the school should not play a part in that in any way. Okay, that's but what I'm saying point. is that assigning the school blame here doesn't make sense. Let's say that I go home. Do you home, not think no, that no, like no, resource no. officers are technically uh, under mandate by the school in some respects? Like, uh, of course they are still operating uh, under uh, orders from the DA. But like, the, of course they're they could be kicked out of the school. There are plenty of different ways of dealing with it if uh, this law is supposed to be enforced. Okay, let's let's say that I'm going to my house, okay? Let's say that I see two shady people hanging around outside my house, and I go inside, and I'm like, I'm actually, like, nervous. I don't know if they're going to rob me or what. They're, like, hanging out. Also, due that... process is still no, required no. for deportation. Uh, okay, okay, that's but fine, but you're not... But... Out their immigration status. Sure, but we're not, we don't care about that, and I know you don't care about that, because you don't care about due process for deportation either, because if they weren't legal, I don't think you would still want them deported, right? So we're not talking about due process for that. Let's say that we have two people that are standing outside. They legitimately like make me nervous. I don't know if they're gonna rob my house or whatever. And I call the cops. Let's say that the cops show up. They arrest these two people for loitering or being threatening or whatever. Um, and then they find out that they're illegal immigrants and they refer them to ICE and they get deported. Am I, as a homeowner, like the person that like reported them, am I now complicit in, in like deporting illegal immigrants? Is that on me? Do I have that liability? Yes. Okay. So should people just never ever call the cops ever then? Um, yeah, I highly, I, I suggest against that, yes.
Okay. I mean, we have we just have like a totally fundamental view of this, I guess. And yeah, um, but to some extent, for uh, certainly that is that no, is not to some extent. We are completely diametrically opposed on this issue. <laughs> I guess we are. I guess like I, when I started the video off, it sounded like we it like it, it feels like there was like a huge. Um, it, it's kind of shocking that this analogy that you're 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 using is like, I mean you're not in any way associated with the fucking random strangers that are standing outside of your house, Steven. Whereas as a fucking school, you are absolutely associated. No, 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 no. I was just educate these kids. No, I was just asking if you were complicit. So you have better, you have a better understanding of, of maybe we shouldn't fucking cooperate with the authorities. So we are technically complicit. It is a terrible analogy that you just used. And it is a rather reactionary one, which I don't even think you agree with. It's not a reactionary one, okay? It's a totally valid question. Let's say that a woman gets raped by somebody that's Hispanic. Do you think that when she reports it to the cops, is she being complicit now and getting people no, deported? of course not. Wait, why not? why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because she's victimized by a fucking crime. It's not a random misdemeanor of a student. Like, it's, she's being victimized by a fucking crime by a stranger or even someone that she knows. That's sure, okay. So, let's say, like let's say fucking, that... Sure. So a, 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 a resource officer being like, Oh, I just saw you fucking steal. Sorry. Yes, you're out of here, buddy. Sure. And so like, let's say let's say that it, let's say that year olds out of this country. Sure. So let's say that a woman is at a, let's say that a woman is at a party. She starts walking home and she's being followed by some people and she's getting nervous. She doesn't know if she's going to be assaulted or what. Let's say that she calls the cops there. Cops arrest the two guys and they get reported to ICE because they're illegal immigrants. Did that woman is she playing a part then in, in calling the cops and getting illegals deported? Should she not have done that? Oh, oh this is. Like, this is hurting my brain, dude. It's hurting your brain because like, you're just, like you're because saying a random street because a random stranger walking and feeling threatened by random people is entirely fucking different than, like I said, a school participating in this thing that they know they shouldn't be participating in. I'm like only asking this because you said they fucking possibly can. You said you said to never call the cops. So I'm asking you if you really feel that way. You said you should never call the cops. So it sounds like you didn't. You don't actually feel that way. Wowie. Okay. <sighs> you in the comfort of your own own home calling police officers because you saw some random uh, uh, people that scared you is a little different than a woman walking home at night or, or, or a man walking home at night alone and feeling threatened by the presence of other people. They would still be somewhat complicit, but it's not the exact, it's not the same. Okay. And in that, under that circumstance- Okay, so that, okay, wait, so that's- that they call the sure. cops. So, okay, there are two I things. Wouldn't. Sure, and so I there are two- And someone else to not do that as well, but it's more understandable, and it doesn't really matter because under none of these circumstances, do you have an obligation to the person that you are fucking calling the cops on? Okay. And, well, you, do you see what I'm saying? I, you're giving me like one of the most privileged arguments I've ever heard in my entire life. Like you're literally telling me that like, well, if you're a woman and you're walking down the street and you might be scared because of people following you, it's pretty rude of you to call the cops. That's a pretty mean thing to do, dude. Don't do that. What if you've got a person who lives in a neighborhood where there have been a lot of break-ins? What if it's somebody who's had their house broken into before and are worried that somebody's going to do it? Like it's easy for you to say like, oh, well, you should never ever call the cops ever. I don't know if you've been in these situations or if you know people that have been in these situations. But that's a pretty yeah. shitty thing to say to people that like maybe are actually fearing for stuff like that. Like I feel like it's really crazy to be like, oh, you should just never ever call the cops ever. Why and if Why you, would you say it's a privileged argument? When because you're making it because it's a really privileged argument. This idea Dude, that like ask the fucking people that live in poor neighborhoods if they choose to call the cops in, under these circumstances or not. Okay, like what are you talking about? It's a privileged argument. Have you talked to a person who lives in a fucking poor neighborhood? I'm confused. Like right now, like it, 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 what? Okay. What? So, so you legitimately think then you should never call the cops? So then, going back to the earlier thing, then a woman gets raped, she shouldn't yeah, under call the cops. Circumstances, yes, I, I don't, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. Okay, so let's say two people break into your backyard and they're going through your shed. Should you call the cops then, or is it just your shed? So it doesn't matter. You shouldn't call the cops. Uh, no, if they're if they're breaking into your if they're uh, I guess if they're breaking in, uh, it's different. Yeah. Again, different circumstances where a random person, not a fucking institution that was previously urged and understands what kind of responsibility they have for the children that are educating. So, yeah. I know that you're trying to narrow this as best as possible to figure out if I'm like morally consistent and if I if I will abide by my principles. And I guess it like shocks you a little bit. But um, one, it's kind of weird that you said that it was a privileged perspective that I have when most people most people that don't have privilege are uh, hold the same exact belief for the reason that police officers don't actually increase uh, security in a neighborhood that they're uh, dealing with, especially if it's a fucking poor neighborhood. And two, 
like a misdemeanor could be it's just I'm, I'm, like getting arrested for a fucking misdemeanor okay, and getting I'm only out saying of this country this. I'm... is obviously a bad thing and if it wasn't such a fucking bad thing they wouldn't have ha they would have fought so hard to maintain the sanctuary city status to begin with the only Again, reason though, i'm it's asking this a semantics on. argument because functionally the outcome is still the same but it's not that so the re okay so you said that if a school has a police officer there that the school has a tacit endorsement of every single thing the police officer does like everything the da says what i said was does that mean that anybody that calls the cops ever then is tacitly endorsing everything the da says and that and then you said well you should never call the cops and that's why i'm giving examples where it's like do you really no, I believe said, that you shouldn't call the cops if you feel threatened by random people uh in your home and then i follow that up by saying if you're if you feel threatened and you're walking home and these people are like menacing or threatening you then if you genuinely feel uh for your safety it's still not great uh, i've been in there similar situations like that before where i chose not to and i probably wouldn't uh, given the consequences of what might happen to those people, uh, especially if they're like people of color or poorer people, uh, the police is kind of uh, famously not very good at dealing uh, with uh, poor people in, under those circumstances. But um, if someone is like breaking into your fucking house, uh, then yes, it's entirely different. Why are we? Oh my god! Why, oh no! Why are we? Why are we so? This is the first point that we're like fucking going back and forth on that I elaborated on after. Oh, because I think it's a good point, because my view is that of this video, it sounds like in the entire video, you're just saying you hate cops. Like, that's what I hear. Like, every, it feels like this entire video is just a video of you talking about how much you hate cops. Like, that's what it feels like almost every single point comes back to, is it just that you really hate cops. And then in this conversation that we're having, like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of these, like, points are, like, insane. Like, what so- What difference does it make if I hate cops or not, Destiny? Like, look at the fucking video. Did she back down from her statement and lie. I'm talking about Kamala Harris, okay? Like, stop getting so caught up on the fact that she used to be a cop or whatever the fuck. And, and You're the, the one that's throwing the word around like Gestapo and shit. I'm not caught up on her being a cop at all. Like, that's, that's your whole point. This whole video is constantly bringing up how horrible and evil cops are. I mean, I, I largely... Is that... Is that what you want to have a debate on? Like, whether cops are no. good or bad or something? I, like, no, look the, at the video. They... Look, at the, look at the video. Hold on. Look at the you literally video. call the video like, Kamala I'm talking Harris. About her statements and how she lies and how that's relatively hypocritical. I'm talking about who she chooses to prosecute versus who she chooses not to prosecute under certain circumstances. Sure, and we'll get and to those. Yes, that's kind of bad and indicative of like what kind of what what interests or what moneyed interests in even some instances like um, Nugent can can guide her to do certain things or not guide her to do certain things. Sure. And that, to me, is absolutely important in a political candidate that's going to be the president that is literally spreading this, like, progressive fucking uh, attitude now. Sure, and we'll go over those things of the future. I'm just, I'm really curious on this idea that you should, like, very rarely, if ever, call the cops. Like, okay, so I'm just curious. In this situation, you're a woman. Okay, but we're talking no, about, but we're talking about the video. Let's not get caught no, up in that. It is, it's separate, no, no, no you took it here. So we it. have, no, no, it's not a side argument. It's a central argument. The reason why this is important is because you said that a school that has a resource officer on school grounds is tacitly endorsing everything that the DA has stole that police officer to do, which I think is ridiculous. Just because you will call the cops doesn't mean that you support every single thing the police department does. But now you're telling me that that's true, so I'm testing you and I'm asking okay well let's say a woman is leaving a party two guys are following her she calls the cops is the woman now like morally culpable if those people get deported by ice is that like her fault uh, i said it already to some to a certain degree sure um not entirely but what does that mean not entirely this is like the most weaselly thing i've ever heard in my life because so yeah she does share scared if she's fucking scared it's understandable to, uh, sorry if she's fucking scared it's understandable to call the police officers but again you're hammering down Something that is not related to the fucking main conversation or the main points. Well, the, so the main point that I brought up was that schools don't refer people to ICE. The police department does if somebody is charged with a crime. Those, that's my so main will point. We, will we move, point, will we move uh, past this if I say I agree with you? I was 100% incorrect for, using, uh, uh, for saying that um, the policy, it, it, for reading the headline and then elaborating on what was happening um is that fine it will because like the headline in that article was kamala Harris supported uh positive reported arrested undocumented juveniles this uh ice i i guess uh, yeah we can move no, yeah we can right, move past that right. thing. I we can move have, past I, I shouldn't have used it i i, I shouldn't have said schools i should have said school resource officers and if you were to say like well it was because of felonies or misdemeanors well i did actually elaborate on that later down the line Instead of saying schools, I should have said school resource officers, uh, 
uh, tasked with upholding the law. That's okay. wrong too. It wasn't school resource officers. It was people that were charged with a crime. So if you say that, if a resource officer arrested a kid and then he was charged with a crime, then yes, that we're 100% in agreement. Okay, that's that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Truancy. Okay, yeah. Um, a school, sorry, a school resource officer that caught someone in the process of a misdemeanor, which would be, you know, like theft. Or, or like a fist fight between kids. Okay, so the 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 truancy thing. Um, mm -hmm. Talk talk to me about how you feel about this. I think that um, using uh, intimidation tactics and using the state in uh, in this sort of way to force parents into making sure their children have to go to school. Uh, is uh, awful and indicative of Kamala Harris's perspective on how to use the law and how to use uh, state-sponsored violence or the threat of uh, state violence, rather. Okay. What else do you think Kamala could have done? Uh, not force that. Not, not uh, put that in place. Okay. So I'm curious. Let's say you have a situation where you have a parent or two that are just lazy. They don't really want to send their kid to school and you're the DA, do you think that you should just leave it be and say whatever and that a kid just doesn't go to school? Or do you think you should try to take steps to alleviate that? No, you should use, um, as the DA, you don't really have a lot of power in that regard. But if you were, if you were uh, a, a more progressive DA, then you, of course, don't do anything about it. And as an independent uh, civilian, independent citizen outside of that, you... Uh, use your fucking power to vote. Yep. Okay. And, okay. I don't care about any of that. I agree with everything. Force for education, yeah, I, rather than uh, and like force for uh, better education, better funding for education uh, I, in those uh, regions, rather than um, you know use your fucking powers to be sure. like we're gonna scare the shit out of some uh, mothers, including like one of the uh, what are the I mean there was like a homeless mom who, Ask us who on was if... threatened by police officers. Uh, she was a fucking parent of like three children. Like there are actual real victims of this. It's not like. It's not like the image that you're portraying. Okay, so what you just said with like, her, what you just said. Okay, okay can, you, can we not ramble for 10 hours? Because you just brought up like twice. lazy. Yeah, okay, fuck it. They're lazy. They shouldn't go to jail or they shouldn't be threatened with uh, jail either. Okay, let's just focus on the, on, the, on the thing with the homeless mom. So you realize that the end result for her was that her kids got back into school and she had no charges brought against her. Everything was dropped. So she wasn't a victim of this. That woman that you're citing is an example of this actually working in an incredibly positive way. Because they brought in law enforcement, they were able to get her connected to the school resources, they were able to get her kids going to school, and all the charges against her were dropped. The end result, at the end of the day, was her kids that weren't going to school are now going to school. So you find this to be a successful program, then? If your measurement of success is getting kids to go to school, then in, in that case, it seems to have been. Okay. What if I fucking put a gun to every parent's head? That's a, that's a successful program, right? Because every single parent and every single child uh, ended up going to, every single child ended up going to school. Like what a, what a ridiculous like uh, a metric of success you have here. Where I don't know. Where I'm using this as an opportunity to showcase the willingness of Kamala Harris to utilize the monopoly that the state has on enforcing certain rules through state violence, through the threat of state violence through stealing people's fucking freedoms away from them for not even a, like a truancy, for, for truancy violations. And, and, and you're saying that, well, just because it was a threat, it's okay. Okay, I, I don't know what the monopoly on state violence has, I mean, I don't know if we're going full libertarian with these arguments, but... Um... No, but the state does have a monopoly on violence, right? Unless you think that the black mothers were like, oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna actually fucking, uh, you know, 360 no-scope these police officers are coming in, yeah. Well, yeah, we want the state to have a monopoly on violence, don't we? Isn't that like, do we want other people just like murdering each other randomly in public? I don't understand. Like, don't we generally, as the public, like, entrust the state with our, you know, with our violent enforcement of laws, things like paying taxes and shit, don't, with things like levying healthcare, things like dealing Not with our. Not in all circumstances, Destiny. Uh, I think you know what my perspective is on that, given the fact that you yourself have also argued about how uh, violence could be morally justified. I'm sure that we're not in disagreement here. Yeah, I agree that it could be, but in an ideal world, we would absolutely want the state to have a monopoly on violence. We don't want normal citizens enacting violence unless Again, we feel the need for. By the way, we're, we're talking about we're talking about 
enforcement in this circumstance and we're talking about what that says about kamala harris and you're caught up on like the seventh layer of of like something i said about the state having a monopoly on violence why because, are you doing no but because let's have a conversation sure. about what this says about kamala it's, harris yes in we which can... you literally said that if the results are if, if it's just the threat of jail time and that the results are, are positive then it's okay you and i have a fundamental disagreement here Okay, because my problem is that the way that you're framing all of this makes it seem like Kamala Harris is literally fucking Rita from the fucking Power Rangers. She's like the worst person in the world. Do you but not it's... think that it is unnecessary? Do you not think that this was excessive force? Do you not think that locking up, or the threat, rather, of locking up mothers for truancy is unnecessary or excessive? If you don't think that, if you think that it's not unnecessary, then we can have a conversation about that. I don't know where I would fall on it. I, I think I lean against it, but the, you have to understand that like- then you're, why are you having this argument with me right now? If because I don't care about pushing a political yeah. agenda. I just want to have a good conversation about the issue. And saying that she's walking around threatening homeless people to kill them, blah, 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 is a bullshit way to have this conversation. It's not really a good framing of it, right? The way that it's presented is that there are a lot of parents whose children are going to school that with a little bit of help from, you know, whether it's, you know, scary looking fucking homicide agents or whatever, could be, connected with school resources that will get their kids sent to school. As somebody that talks about cyclical property, you know, about all of these systemic institutional fuck-ups with people, one of the most important things your kid can do is actually fucking go to school. It's one of the best ways to break the cycle is to actually get your kid in school every day. I agree. So, like, if we can and use... Wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 you rail so much. Let me just finish this, okay? If you're the DA, Sorry. and as you said, you have very limited resources to do things, okay? You can't pay kids to send their fucking kids to school. That's not your power, the DA. But if you're the DA, and you're prosecuting crimes every day where you're seeing fucking 16, 17 year olds dead on the fucking street and you have a way to utilize your police force to get kids to go to school that seems like one of the most positive ways you could ever apply a police force not on the fucking corner cracking kids heads for fucking dealing weed not rolling around neighborhoods looking to fucking fuck some people up but actually getting parents to send their fucking kids to school that seems like one of the best possible ways you could utilize the police force yeah when you're a hammer everything starts looking like a nail i understand but in this under these circumstances she should not be trying to solve this problem as a fucking DA. And the way that she tried to solve the problem is something that you and I agree is excessive and unnecessary. I mean, it depend on the application. With the way that the law is worded, the idea is supposed to be that you have to try. Police officers will make sure that but the school, or I'm sorry, that the student and the student's family knows that they are being contacted, that everything is going to be done in order to get these people like Asher going to school, and that legal actions are only going to be threatened as a last case resort when the parents have not made any effort to cooperate with the school. I don't think that's that bad. If you've got a bunch yeah. of parents that aren't sending their kids to school and the kid is just fucking jerking off all day or whatever and they're not doing shit, there has to be accountability there. That's part of being a fucking parent is making sure your goddamn kid gets to school it's an important part of his life like like we know this too you know this like how frustrating is it for a police officer to deal with a school whose life has been fucked since he's fucking four years old because he's got parents who don't give a fuck about him how frustrating is it for a teacher to deal with kids right you know teachers need to educate kids better well i can't do it the kids don't even fucking go to school if you have an opportunity to make kids actually get their ass and fucking see in a classroom it seems like a relatively positive thing to me i don't understand i mean like we can argue whether or not like is it good to do this with the police force maybe maybe not i don't know we use a police force to enforce other things like cps right that doesn't mean fuck all if you don't have a police force behind it so i, I mean i I don't know. I just don't think it's this like one-sided, horrendously fucking evil issue where cops are threatening homeless moms. And that one example you cited that actually shows the law, law working in an incredibly positive way. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for your point. Um, like I said, the DA should not try to deal with this in any way whatsoever. Not by over-prosecuting uh, kids for the crime of, of like, you know, getting caught with like a dime bag or whatever, and certainly not by trying to, uh, or threatening to jail their mothers. That's my point. And I think that says a lot about what Kamala Harris's perspective is on how to use her powers, um, uh, to, uh, how to use her powers at the time uh, to solve a, a problem. So if you, if that there are parents, what I mentioned in I'm the, curious, the video as well, yeah. by the way, I understand. So I'm curious. And then why are, did you not see her talking about how, uh, like, I mean, that was a, that was unrelated to this one or that was unrelated to the truancy thing. Um, well, she talked about it as like a, a as a swimming success, which I, uh, take, uh, issue with obviously, but then, um, like this is a, this is a, like an entire analysis of her perspective, looking at 
um, looking at like her, her understanding of like funding schools versus funding prisons and her track record shows that she is on board with funding prisons and saying that uh, the, the funding of schools is a laughable idealistic uh, perspective. That's absolutely not agree. what she said. That's yeah. not what she said. She even said at the beginning of that statement you clipped that conceptually she's on board with it. But realistically, you have to fund your prisons. And dealing with idealistic progressives that just want to defund all prisons and defund all cops and throw everybody out of the fucking everybody out of jail, blah, blah, blah. That that's an overly is idealistic. That, wait, is that what uh, is that what the uh, opposing side was uh, doing? They were saying we need to defund all prisons now. We're at like all of a sudden the entirety of the Democratic legislature of, of uh, California was a bunch of prison abolitionist anarchists? No. And I fucking went in extensively to talk about uh, what circumstances led to her saying that. Destiny, come on. Why are you? Wait, I'm, wait, what I'm do you mean? What's so, confused. She literally you. says in the video that you have to address crime in a community. That's all she's saying. I don't think it's that like hyperbolic. I don't think it's the word like, why do I have three packs of butter? There are people in cities that don't feel safe. You have to address that. And just screaming, build more schools, not more prisons, doesn't really do anything to alleviate those people's fears. And if there's anything you should know as a citizen of the United States, it's that people are fucking motivated by fear to vote for shit. It's why we were in Iraq. It's why we voted for the Patriot Act. It's why Trump is a fucking president. Like, it's why okay, Brexit happened. I, I know, but I don't agree with that. I don't like that. And I have the right to be like, I don't think that that is a good way to go about it or a good way to farm for fucking votes that's like th that's what i'm saying <laughs> okay do you have do you have additional information as to why that that would not be kamala harris's actual perspective when she literally uh voted on a, a bill that also followed that protocol wait what, what do you mean on perspective on what that um, she doesn't want to fund. Like, she, you, you're saying uh, that her perspective is she not, doesn't not, want schools not, to be funded not the directly, but like it ties back into the truancy stuff and also the uh, the thing that I mentioned before of like uh, of of following through on on Gavin Newsom's reversal of a sanctuary city uh, provision, uh, all fit into that same exact. Uh, narrative. But it doesn't. You're picking and choosing what you want. You're ignoring the fact, for instance, that Kamala has always been in support of people like Dreamers. Kamala has always been in favor of protecting the city's sanctuary status. That's one of the reasons why they gave, now I don't know if it's bullshit or not, one of the reasons why they gave um, changing that law is because they were worried that it would, if it was charged in court that the city would lose its sanctuary state status. I don't know if that's true or not if she was trying to cover ass. It kind of sounds like she was trying to cover ass. But historically, no, this, the narrative doesn't fit your point of view that Kamala Harris is some illegal immigrant hating DA because it seems like she supports other things that are in favor of illegal immigrants like the dreamer stuff okay you can be in favor of, dude that's literally what my point is that my point is that on certain issues she advocates for things that she does not advocate for or in her or that she does not show in her track record that's my point is that kamala harris like the entire video is based around and my summarization was literally that kamala harris says one thing but she doesn't actually uh, show that she has done that same thing throughout her career when she had the power to do so. That's my point. I understand that. And your conclusion logically like follows. got fucking PolitiFact fact check for like half the shit that I have on here. Yeah, but and the PolitiFact is like relatively liberal. The PolitiFact stuff had nothing to do with the claims that you're making, though. Like, uh, like or, or, or it's different than the ones that I'm being critical of. So, for instance, in the PolitiFact article, it agrees with me that Kamala Harris was not using schools to send children to ICE. It was using the police force. It was on, based on convictions. Yeah. Or, or, I'm sorry, not convictions, but charges. But it was based on criminal charges. It wasn't just the fact that schools were going through yeah, finding undocumented kids. Yeah, she lied about and said that she didn't know sure. uh, and I, I don't uh, disagree what, the, uh, with what the outcome of that was. I don't disagree with you there. It, it, that was obviously the intended purpose of the law. She obviously lied there. That's what PolitiFact fact-checked her on, of course. Yeah, that was the main point of that, by the way. That was the main point of my argument there. Okay. Uh, it wasn't like, um, I don't know, it wasn't that... Uh, that uh, there could be uh, miscommunication or that I, I could have caused so much confusion on the school issue. Sure, okay. I'm, I'm saying that she's a bad candidate because she does, she's not consistent. And this is the same metric that I would apply to most candidates, if not all of them. Uh, all of them, actually. Not most candidates, all of them. Now, it, it, it depends. It depends on like what they're advocating for now or what kind of behavior that they're exhibiting now. 
uh, in regards to like Elizabeth Warren, for example, like her being a Republican uh, through the George W. Bush era, George H. W. Bush era and Reagan era. It's kind of weird because she was a full grown adult. But ultimately, like, I think that she has shown throughout her entire fucking career that she is a dogged supporter of, of consumer protections. For the most part, she's tried to she's attacked Wall Street uh, throughout her career as well. Like, I, I respect that. So that it shows me consistency. That shows me growth. That's something that I care about and, and makes me believe that she might be genuine when she says stuff on the fucking podium. Kamala, on the other hand, is the opposite of that. So, of course, I'm going to look at her track record and call it into question. Sure. Just like I've done. And that's what we're doing. For, we're looking at the. We're... Just like I've done for Joe Biden, just like I've done for Pete Buttigieg, and just like I've done for, uh, uh, I, I guess, that's it for now. Sure. I will I'm just going through bit. the pillars that you're basing this argument off of, that she's been radically inconsistent in the past. I don't think somebody that says that they want to deport people that are charged with felonies is, is the same type of immigrant hating person that Trump might be because he wants to like block immigration from Muslim. Wait, Georgia. did I say that? At which point did I say that Kamala Harris is like the same kind of rabid immigrant hater that Donald Trump is? Why do you what? You're not, but that's the narrative that you're trying to set up. Maybe that she's that bad, but the narrative you're trying no, to. No, it's not. Okay, no, I, I don't I, know. I, I'm I, sorry. Hold on. Can you just tell me? Tell me? Tell me? Tell me what you think Kamala's position is on immigrants? Then? Can you just tell me then? Because I don't know. What no, is your position on illegal immigrants? Is, okay, I don't think Kamala Harris is a rabid immigrant hater. To the same level no, no, of Donald not the same Trump. level. Tell me what her position is on illegal immigrants. I'm curious. Um, she's pro DACA. She's pro DACA recipients. Uh, I don't know if she is uh, pro amnesty. Probably will say that she is. Um, I would I would uh, question that though. Especially oh. so if she got do you into think, a position of power. So do you think she's like relatively pro illegal immigrant then, or? I would say that um, she is probably going to do the exact same thing that Barack Obama did and claim that she's pro-immigrant or claim that she's for amnesty, not really push for any sort of uh, meaningful change or not really start the pathway towards citizenship that she probably promises on the podium. I don't know if she did. And then uh, continue down the same, uh, same fucking uh, track record as Barack Obama, which we now regard as like deportation king, which we now look back at as, uh, as a, a president who at least still kept some children behind bars. Now, there's uh, obviously fundamental differences with why Donald Trump is doing that versus Obama, but it was still cruel and unusual back then, and it's part of the reason why I fucking hate the Democratic Party. Okay. Um... Does that make sense uh, to you, or do you think that I'm wrong? Yeah, yeah I know. I, know. I never, I never. Would you give like your law? Yeah, I don't to do amnesty oh. measures and take all the children out of the fucking, uh, uh, take all the break out all the children from uh, the the deportation center. When you give a 20 minute speech about what you think people, I don't disagree with any of that. If your facts follow, we're underlying the, we're, we're analyzing the underlying facts though. You, ju you, when you just talk for 20 minutes about how you blah, 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 blah. Of course I agree with that if your underlying facts are correct. But that's what we're looking at right now is if the underlying facts you asserted are correct. Because if they're not correct, then your conclusion doesn't reasonably follow. Wait, what, what, part of, uh, what part of her track record that I brought into question made you feel as though it was uh, my, my facts were incorrect? The part where uh, I said schools rather than uh, resource officers at schools who saw... Uh, juveniles uh, potentially committing a misdemeanor that they charged with because I didn't elaborate on that. That's the underlying fact that's correct. I mean, we were going back to point one, I guess. But yeah, those are two monumentally different things. Okay. All right. Well, I, I guess, yeah. Um, sure. So just, uh, just, just, I mean, like, so for anybody listening, the idea that you would say people that are charged with a crime are going to be referred to ICE is that is monumentally different than saying that schools are just referring all undocumented immigrants or to the ICE. truancy stuff too by the way like i mean not a great way to deal with that but i guess it's the only way that a da has to deal with it and if it's working yeah because okay you're the da you're not supposed to be fucking dealing with it that's my point what do you mean you're the that's da you're not... hammer, it, it all looks like a nail to you so you pass the buck to somebody else if you have an ability to combat a problem if you're the person that's watching yes, your officers DA, mm. you're uh, you have the power to do things okay you have the power to either prosecute or over prosecute or uh, or have leniency in this case progressive da's should usually apply leniency in, in, especially under a circumstance where we're talking about fucking truancy. So the most important thing a DA can do is nothing. That's what your argument is. <laughs> yes, yes, that's precisely what I'm saying. Okay, so just all cops are bastards. All why did DA, why not just make a 35-minute video? For example, why not just make not fucking charging people with bullshit 
uh, uh, misdemeanors over uh, uh, carrying marijuana. Like, Why not just make a 35 minute video? Both these sorts of people who do exhibit, le who, who do demonstrate leniency when they're making these sorts of decisions at the fucking DA. So Why not yes, just make a 35 minute video? On my position on this. Why not just make a 35 minute video then saying all cops are bastards? If we don't care about anything else, just say DA should do fucking I nothing. I've done that before and I will continue to do that. Thank you, Destiny. But why are you so caught up on these like like literal semantics uh, arguments here instead of like looking at Kamala Harris's track record? Nothing you have said thus far has been like, this is entirely wrong. You exhibited false information. Maybe you should look at like the way you uh, look at my videos and the way you uh, analyze uh, the things that I'm saying uh, because I feel like it's a little fucking painted by uh, biases. Like I, I, I don't understand. You, you literally call the police Gestapo like multiple times in your video, and you obviously have a massive hate one for all cops. How am I the one with the bias here? My problem is that the underlying facts are not correct, and anytime we move away from one, you keep bringing them up again. It's like when I argue with <laughs> race. If I say ACAB as well, I don't think that they're all fatherless bastards, just for the record. Sure, but this is like every argument I've ever had with a race realist who's like, well, I think this thing. And it's like, well, hold on. Like, these underlying facts don't make sense. And then when you start to address some of the underlying facts, they keep retreating back to their higher level position, ignoring all of the other underlying facts that were incorrect. That's what it feels like here. Like, we're trying to Destiny, establish... That none of the underlying facts that I brought up were literally incorrect. You openly mentioned that you agree with me that it's not a good idea to fuck... It's, it's excessive and over prosecutorial to fucking use your powers as the DA to lock up or even threaten to lock up mothers for truancy. You agreed with me. So I don't, okay, you're fra do you understand how you're framing this? Like, lock up mothers for truancy. What about parents that were just too lazy to send their kids to school without getting a kick in the Dude, ass from the like police department? You sound like a fucking department. reactionary. Do you not hear yourself? You're like, what about those lazy parents who just didn't want to send their children? Yeah, what about the fucking homeless mom? I'm telling you, like, why do you keep going? Who are in okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, the, the, okay, 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 okay. Why do you what keep? What Kamala Harris did with her powers, showing me what? that she is willing and able to fucking use. Why? Uh, the, like I said. Why do you keep? Why? Why do you keep to going? Get someone to do something. Why do you keep, first of all, we use state violence to get people to do everything. You don't disagree with that because you're in favor of taxes. So that is a dumb libertarian argument. I don't know why you keep saying that. We always use state violence to motivate people to act in the best interest of the state. That's literally why the state exists. It's yes, just to secure all the rights of the people. How can you not see this? There are certain things that I agree with in regards to state violence. There are certainly things that I disagree with, like truancy, <laughs> when, when you're utilizing state violence. And your answer to this basically, and maybe I'm fucking strawmanning you, but you've been doing that the entire time this debate, so I'm just going to say it. Maybe your point is, well, it doesn't matter if people are threatened because there are a lot of lazy mothers out there, and also it worked because it increased school uh, admission by 20%. Who is supposed to make okay, kids? Who let's, are... fucking, let's go out to every single, let's round up all the fucking kids and force them on the bus with guns. It'll increase school ad uh, admission by 100%. It's excessive. You already admitted that it was excessive. Why are we having this argument? Who should be making kids go to school? <laughs> positive influences, positive reinforcement, okay? Not negative, not pushing kids to go to school. Positively uh, getting uh, learning environments, especially in underfunded areas, to have good programs, to have good teachers, to have better opportunities so that kids can go to school. Basketball programs, basketball leagues, like sports leagues. Okay, stop. Uh, okay, so, fucking, so, uh, resource, yeah, sure. so let's say, let's say, given sure. to schools so that they, like, computers, uh, shit like that. Not okay. a fucking cop that's threatening your mom with going to jail. Okay, let's say the kids still don't go to school. Who, on this, don't we? Oh my god. Let's say the kids still don't go to school. Who should be in charge of doing it at the end of the day? Or do you just say, fuck it, just they don't have to go to school? Who cares about systemic, who, who cares about cyclical violence or, or cycles of poverty or anything? Fuck it. Steve. No, I'm curious. Can you just answer the question? Who should force him at the end of the day? Or should nobody force him? And you're, just, you're, you're wait, like, can you not answer that question? You can't answer the question. realistic fucking corner right now. It's not. This with, happens. With like wait, you don't think? Percentage. Obviously, it shows that it, when schools are more funded, that, that the admission goes up. So like that's the point, right? We're not trying to get to a hundred percent. We can't. Get I'm not. At, I'm that's asking you. I'm asking you. Who at the end of the day, if the if the parents aren't doing it out of laziness or whatever, who should be involved? Why are you saying that ends justify the? Why are you making the ends justify the means argument in an argument where you agree that the ends are? Uh, uh, I mean, the the means are fucking uh, excessive. Okay, like, one. I, I, I make the ends justify, justify the means argument all the time. I, so I make the ends justify the means argument because I'm a consequentialist. So I will always make the ends justify the means. Okay, I, but that's not well, relevant to anything we're talking about. That's when it came to schools 
and, and <laughs> when it came to schools being a part of the school to deportation pipeline, so obviously you weren't a consequentialist there, but I guess you're a consequentialist under this circumstance because because the consequence of wait, wait uh, because the, the wait what wait, no wait no no will you don't let me finish a single thing. Let me know when you're done. Okay, holy shit, he can call me back. Oh my god, I can't finish a single fucking point. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Okay, are you are you calm down? <laughs> I, I am. Are okay, you, you gotta down? let me finish a single point, dude. Holy shit, you've talked like four okay, times as sorry, much as me. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I know. So I'm, I'm you literally, off. you really literally, excited. you literally just said, okay, I'm in favor of consequentialism when it's making kids go to school, but I'm not in favor of consequentialism when it's deporting kids. No fucking shit. Because deporting people, I generally consider to be bad. Making kids go to school, I generally consider to be good. How the fuck is that confusing to you? <sighs> Okay, you're right. I misunderstood your point. Can we, uh, what was your question? Let My point answer. is, what is, is let's say kids aren't going to school because the parents are being lazy or whatever. At the end of the day, do you think the state should force them to go to school or should it be okay if parents just never want their kids to go to school? They just stay home and not yes, go to school. It should be okay for parents that never want their kids to go to school in this ridiculous fucking hypothetical straw man that you literally created just now to justify your perspective. Okay, yes. let's use a more realistic example. Do you think the state should have the power to force kids to get vaccines? <sighs> yes. Why? Why that, but not attend school? Herd immunity. Um, there are better ways of, there are better, if push came to shove and people were literally like, oh, I'm not going to actually fucking get vaccinated. Uh, I'm not going to actually get vaccinated. You can come and take it, uh, liberals or whatever the fuck uh, dumbass anti-vaxxers go for. Then yes, at that point, it should be at the fucking, uh, uh, it should be at the barrel of a gun, at the, at the threat of uh, state violence. Okay, so you're saying that state violence. there are better ways which you and I agree on that we could get kids to go We're to not at that part yet. We're not, we're not, we're not, we are so not. Why are you fucking because putting up, why are you pulling this reactionary straw man out of your ass? And like, there, are, I, there is an epidemic of fucking lazy families that just don't want to send their children to school. We are not at there are better ways yet. We haven't even gotten to that part of the argument yet, okay? We're not even at that part of the argument yet, okay? So, if you believe... Oh my god, there's gonna be so... Oh, fuck. If, you right, believe, go ahead. if you believe that the state should enforce violence here on, on, a, on an issue that would improve the outcomes of all of society, because that's what we're talking about when we talk about herd immunity, I don't understand why it's so ridiculous to think the state should also be invested in making sure that kids actually show up at school. Because, uh, because I would argue, and I think you're going to go against this, but I would argue that like um, not getting vaccinated and, and, and uh, not creating herd immunity is like infinitely worse than uh, a person potentially not going to school uh, in this ridiculous, again, ridiculous hypothetical that you have created now. We are arguing in this ridiculous hypothetical. We have moved so far beyond the fucking points of the video that I, I don't even understand wh why we're here. Okay, so you keep calling this a ridiculous hypothetical, but the example that you keep citing me is literally the hypothetical that Kamala Harris advocated for working. So I don't know why you keep calling it a hypothetical. Because I already mentioned to you that there are justifiable instances of state violence, and that was not one of them. Okay, so at the end of the day, if kids don't want to go to school, it, so I guess call it a ridiculous hypothetical, but if the kid doesn't want to school, the parents don't want him to go to school, then the state shouldn't do anything about that. They should just be allowed to yes. stay home. Okay. Yes, let's just let these, in this ridiculous hypothetical, Again, I'm not letting you fucking frame this as though it is the rule of law. Is it? It's certainly something that is happening all around the fucking world. Uh, it, yes, in that ridiculous fucking hypothetical, we should just let kids run amok on the streets, and and we shouldn't jail their parents. Okay, all right. Like, I, fucking nuts. I, I mean, let, let's just let's just operate off of like the crazy fucking, very reactionary sounding uh, uh straw mans or I mean uh. Uh, yeah, reactionary straw man hypotheticals that you're fucking creating right now. Let's just operate off of that. There's no reason to look at the video. There's no reason to look at like my analysis of of what I think uh, it could happen potentially under uh, Kamala Harris. Let's just look at your hypotheticals. Is there another one? Uh, w let's just move past it. Let's go to uh, we did. I so like What's my happen? my hypothetical or generally that if like if there is a vested interest in the child, the state has a vested interest in the child always. This is why we compel, for instance, men to pay child support if they leave their fucking single moms, right? Because the state has a has a vested interest in the child. I think that one of the best ways to break cycles of poverty is education. So I also think the state should have a vested interest in a child going to school. If that means enforcing it with state violence, I'm okay with that. Yeah. That's my position. And but if you're not should, okay, and the DA should do something like um, for example. The DA should involve themselves in every matter that they possibly can uh, and, and use the state in this regard, uh, especially if the ends justify the means, right? Like, it's, it's okay. 
by well, going forward, for example, if there is, um, I don't know, if there's like fucking, uh, God, I can't even come up with a fucking analogy. It's so insane. It's okay, so, let's, here, let's literally move. Literally, the most insane analogy I could come up with is literally locking up mothers or threatening to lock up mothers to, uh, uh, to, to get their children to go to school in a system where this fucking problem, the main problem is underfunding, which you know and you agree with. Yep. But we both agree that Kamala Harris can't do anything about that. Yes, and shouldn't. No, not so, anything. Let's say should let's not, say and so, should not sure. do something sure. about the other element as well. Sure. So let's say that um For example, opiate addiction is a problem, right? Opiate addiction is a gigantic problem in this country. It's an epidemic. Should Kamala Harris lock up fucking people for opiate addiction if, if the ultimate result is that these people in jail will get proper treatment and in the form of like, I don't know, uh, they'll still have their freedoms removed, but ultimately they're still getting treated in jail. They're putting solid, they're putting in, they're being put in solitary confinement, but hey, they don't have heroin in their system anymore. Yep, that's a win for me. I'm Stephen Bonnell. I think that that's a good situation. Uh, not, let's not deal with it from a form of like leniency in regards to the DA and then uh, and then focusing on rehabilitative programs, which a lot of progressive DAs do all around the fucking country. If, if, if what, what you DAs just said... Give, like, Narcan to police officers, let's just jail them, because ultimately, if less people are doing heroin on the street, that's good for me. If Homelessness. What? Let's, not, let's not fucking focus on... Let's not focus on, uh, uh, like, building sustainable public housing for homeless people. Let's just fucking throw them in jail, because ultimately there will be a shelter over their fucking heads. Won that argument, too. Destiny, you were killing it with this DA analogy, dude. I mean, it, the ends justify the means, Destiny. Why aren't we doing that? Because in every example you gave, the end is bad. In my example, the end is good. I don't know how you can't understand the difference between what that. What do you mean? The end is the same. It's still, the end is the same. Less people, technically, people got robbed of their freedom under these circumstances, but technically, they stopped. Uh, Why do you know, keep giving me that? all of these weird libertarian arguments? Why are you concerned about people's freedom? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Why are you throwing because all these like I libertarian platitudes at me? <laughs> This is not a weird. Why are you saying that this is a weird libertarian argument when obviously my entire perspective when it comes to the criminal justice system is that cops should dial it way the fuck back? No, 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 no. So I'm not, no, no, wait, wait. Why are you talking about criminal justice? I'm talking about you giving me these matter, weird. I'm talking about results in matter. I'm talking about no, 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 no. Stop. Oh my god. I'm saying I don't know why you keep saying this is like freedom or like this is so weird. This is like the capitalist argument or the libertarian argument. I don't know. We're not talking about freedom here. We're, we're talking about like policies that improve society. Like that's what we're talking about. Like so when you yeah, ask me, do the ends the so so when you ask me do the ends justify the means, you go, like, what if we throw all the crackheads or homeless people in jail and put them in isolary, isolation or solitary confinement? Those sound like pretty shitty ends, so no. But when you say let's do a policy that gets more kids to go to school, oh, those sound like pretty good ends. Depends on what the means are, I guess. So if in your analogy, to make your analogy work, let's say that we locked up all the opiate uh, abusers, and when we put them in jail, let's say that they got treatment, and when they came out, they weren't addicted to opioids anymore. But yeah, I probably would be in favor of that then. Hell yeah, sure. If that actually was the result of that, then sure. But obviously, that's not what fucking happens in our prisons. People go in, recidivism is insane in the U.S. All around the world, however, in, in the real world where we all exist in, you and I both know that there are numerous different ways of dealing with this problem that don't involve locking people in jail. It's not a fucking libertarian perspective for me to have a, a more rehabilitative approach to criminal justice, uh, the, criminal, the criminal justice system, which includes DAs being more progressive and dialing it way the fuck back and letting other elements of society or letting all, all, all these other institutions actually take control of sure, the situation. But what if you're... They can fix in a much better manner, which what is if... my point and my point across the board. If your other institutions are failing and they're not addressing the problem and you have a way of addressing the problem, why wouldn't you want that person to step up and take charge? Wait, what, what, what point of like threatening to fucking jail mothers is not threatening their freedom, by the way? You don't have to be a fucking libertarian to understand that. I said I don't give a fuck about freedom. I've never argued in favor of freedom. I don't care at all about it. That's not something I'm ever concerned with. So wait, you don't... <laughs> I'm confused. Would this be like a... Uh... If, if, if the situation got to a point where, like, some moms, because they were repeat offenders or whatever, like, actually uh, got locked up in jail, would you, would you then be, uh, I guess, more upset? Is that the only reason why, like, using the threat of, of uh, jail time is acceptable only because they didn't, like, literally send uh, the mothers to jail? 
I mean, it depends on what they got in jail for. If the parents were just literally being lazy, they didn't send yeah, them to school. Truancy yeah, truancy is the point. But in the Kamala Harris law, it was if the parent made absolutely no effort to contact the school or to get together with the school to figure out a solution for their children. So in that case, yeah, because as a payer to the state, which I paid with my taxes, I have a vested interest in the outcomes of children around the United States. When they don't go to school, when they commit crimes, okay. when they do all this shit, it costs me more fucking money. It makes my cities less right, safe. Like, yeah. No, so, no, yeah, I of course, yeah. Your position. Yes, I understand your position. Okay, got it. Um, I am, because uh, like the outcomes of that would be much better for the children. You're right. They would go to they would go to school, but they wouldn't have a mom, which is fine it, it, because at least like they're still going to school. Uh, so yeah, now that's a that's sounds a cool to me and very sound, oh. and very good very good way to go about. That. But the other the better way is if your parents are lazy, just hanging out at home and you're just running around fucking all day in the front yard because your parents don't where, give a fuck if you go this, to school like, or not. <laughs> Sound fucking reactionary. <laughs> you just Lazy came. Ass. You just gave me a reaction. Right? Like, what are you talking about, dude? You're fucking. You you make it seem like there's like a problem of lazy parents out there who are making the personal choice, individual choice. The, okay. The, the what other alternatives are there? Are what al what other alternatives are there? What 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 other what other alternatives are there? What other what other alternatives are there? What other alternatives are there? You're making it worse. Okay. What the other alternatives should not be dealing what, with these issues? That what is what other alternatives point. are there? What other alternatives are there to the parent being lazy if the people don't actually get charged with something unless they've made no effort to contact the school? What other ways of improving efficiencies would you uh, would you uh, try to enforce through uh, state violence or the threat of state violence? Oh, well, glad you asked. I probably like, first of all, like I like how you totally, I like how you totally avoid. If we don't get married, should we also fucking lock them uh, or threaten to lock people up in jail? I like how you totally avoided the uh, the question because you know that the answer is literally. I like how you're not answering my fucking question. Sure. So I think that in cases where we can do very great public harm and it can be alleviated by enforcing it with. I guess ultimately with police, I would generally be in favor of those things. So things like paying your taxes, things like probably forcing kids to go to school, um, things like um, uh, vaccinating children, um, I don't know, things like being forced to provide for your kids. So for instance, if you malnourish your children, if they're not getting the proper nutrition at home, if they're like starving to death, yeah, stuff like that. CPS should be involved. Um, yeah, I guess stuff if like that. If they're starving to death, mm -hmm. not because like the parent is personally fucking making them starve to death, but because they live in a fucking food desert and the person doesn't have enough money, that is a perfect situation in which, no, the DA should not be dealing with that. The DA should not be fucking locking the mother up in jail for that. Okay, yes. so there are two so options. Thank you for there using are two options. Yeah, in which gotcha. you have owned yourself. Okay, yep, I understand. I owned myself because in your analogy, you would let the kids fucking die because it's not right for the DA to do anything, but at <laughs> least the DA didn't step in and do anything. That was ingenious. I love that one. That's fine. Right. Don't send the DA in. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is they're not being funded by, uh, by food stamps. They don't have access to food. So instead of going in and get the kids, just let them fucking die because, man, that would be wrong. That's your analogy, dog. Are you serious right I now? I can't tell if this is like an extended bit you're doing to like trigger all the leftists or something that you're going to say later to be like, oh, I'm just purging my audience. But like, it's okay, honestly let me post. Let me post a hypothetical. Can, I'm super curious. OK, let's say that you're the DA. OK, let's say you have a section in your city where there are kids starving. You can send the cops in to take the kids from the family because they can't afford food or you can do nothing. What should you do? Do nothing. Okay, that's it. So you'd let the kids fucking starve and die. That's cool. So what's the next yeah, point? Yeah, that's go the to... only alternative outcome there, right? No. That's what I just said. No, no, no. no. Stop, my, passing Stop passing the buck. Stop passing the buck. Stop. Powers at the DA. Well, I've already mentioned this a million times. I don't know why we're going back to this point over and over again. Yes, as the DA, you should do nothing. You should not fucking uh, forcibly remove the children because there are fucking children who are starving in a portion of your city because you understand that it is not a consequence of their parents individually being like, I'm going to fucking kill my child. Okay, sure. So, so you would let the children starve if, the, if that was what Are was going to happen. That, like poor people should be in jail. Like I don't get it. <laughs> so, I'm so I'm curious then. So you have a section of the city. The children are going to starve. You're the DA. Should you send the cops in to get the children? Why take do them you think the there are different departments within the government? Why do you think there are different institutions that deal with different? Problems? You literally can't. Because sometimes a fist is not what is necessary. Okay, and that's what the fucking DOJ is. That's what the fucking DA does. It is a fist. You enforce certain things. Okay. And you're, and you it's have an like easy a, 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 question. This is an easy. Like you have a, such an authoritarian perspective right now that I, you you sound like fucking Stalin. Like you sound like a tanky. <laughs> okay, so this is an easy, easy question. Okay, you are the DA. No one else is dealing with this problem. You have a group of kids that are going to starve to death in poor families. Do you send in like? No one else is dealing with this problem. 
Just what I said. If no one else in your city is dealing with the problem, should you send the DA oh, in? Or, I'm sorry, should you send the police in to take the kids? Or do you just let them starve because it's not your problem? Because you shouldn't do anything. Let them starve. Okay. Well, so that we, I mean, let them starve in your, let him starve in your ridiculous hypothetical once again. So this isn't a ridiculous hypothetical. It's literally what was happening with the Kamala Harris thing. She wanted to get more kids to go to school. Schools in, in California don't get proper funding. If you follow any California news, which I know you do, you know the teachers are striking right now because they're not getting fucking paid. So if they don't have the funding to do it and kids are going to school, Kamala said, well, fuck it. I'm going to do what I can to help this problem. Yeah. And I'm saying that she shouldn't have done anything. She should have sat by and just watched it fucking whatever. Again. She overstepped mm -hmm. and used, and you admitted this, excessive tactics. I didn't stop you saying I admitted anything. What I said was I'm not totally sold on the idea, mainly just because I haven't thought about it oh, much. Oh, okay. Mainly but no. because you want to still make this point and argue with me as though we're disagreeing, when in fact, uh, it's just a oh, fucking... Because right, one is the difference right, between like right a... Right no, I no. I can see oh. you own me. You own me on this too. Kamala Harris was good on the truancy. Let's move past it. Okay. Um, what else? This is like the difference between like being a good leader or being an effective policymaker versus being like an ideologue that's like trapped like so high off their own farts that they have like no idea like how to make effective change in the real world, right? Like on one end, we could sit on our ass and go like, oh, well, you know, another department should deal with this. Uh, I, we can't do shit. Like it's not our job, blah, blah, blah. Or you could take, no, a, you I'm could step up. And you, can I please finish one point? Oh, let me finish. But if, else, but if nobody else, but I'm saying if nobody else can deal with it, why wouldn't you as the DA? If you see the outcomes of this, when kids don't go to school, they're on the streets and they it fucking is. kill each other. If you're involved in this directly and you have a chance to stop it happening directly and nobody else is stepping okay, up, why right. wouldn't I you step up right. and do it? Right. If you're, look, it, it, are, are, can we move past it? You're right. You're so right. The DA was good to uh, threaten uh, mothers with truancy and it was a successful policy. You defeated me in the marketplace of ideas once again. Please, can we move past the next point? It's like you're just all you're doing is overwhelming me with ridiculous hypotheticals that do not exist on the fucking planet. So, uh, Every like, hypothetical I'm pointing right. is I'm literally has... Sure, theory. I understand. Let's okay. Literally, this. so just to state the facts. Every hypothetical I pointed to has a direct analogy to exactly what we're talking about. I haven't even... I don't think I've used a child rape analogy once. Oh, I should have earlier. If I said if a child was walking home from school, should they call the police? Because then it would have been a child rape analogy. But, okay. Um, what, was our, what was our next point? Like, okay. I, I don't know. You're the one who watched it. Um... What was uh, this ridiculous were, point about Kamala not prosecuting um, Steve Mugin or whatever, Mutican, Mugin? I don't know how to pronounce his name. <sighs> and then okay. bringing up the fact that five years later, she got a $2,000 donation. Like that was a quid pro quo or something for his multi-billion dollar, like, what? I think Kamala Harris's failure to uh, prosecute Steve Mnuchin is indicative of her opinion to, I mean, is indicative of her perspective when it comes to defending those in positions of power and absolutely showcases that she is not going to be tough on Wall Street crime or uh, instill tough regulations that are an absolute necessity. Uh, she is demonstrated, that's like a perfect example of this. I even mentioned in the conversation that like she was uh, one of the few votes that said no for Steven Mnuchin for uh, state, uh, for uh, the uh, uh, treasury, but at the time, she uh, she refused to prosecute Steve Mnuchin, which is a, a giant fucking problem for me. Um, as far as the quid pro quo goes, uh, I think it's still important that uh, she, her campaign was one of the few people that the Donald Trump uh, were that the uh, Trumps and Steve Mnuchin uh, paid into. It shows that uh, not not that she's like interested in reaching across the aisle, but more so interested in. Um, I mean, can can get favors from uh very far right wing sure or, so um sure i understand what you're wealthy, saying so okay i understand i understand i understand okay so in your world tell me why kamala harris didn't push for charges i already said that because she wasn't interested in <clears throat> um she wasn't interested in 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 pursuing uh like the the widespread misconduct why because she because corrupt does she just like the big banks Anthony, i don't understand what do you mean why so it's like, why so, did the barack obama administration not fucking uh go after any of the ceos like why did the barack obama administration only uh why did eric holder uh why did he why was he satisfied with like bringing down a couple fucking random uh, lower level employees. Sure, let's have, yeah, sure. Because a lot of these people, because a lot of these people have huge super PACs that get tons of donations from a lot of these large corporate interests. It Do doesn't any... have to be a quid pro quo. My point is that it, wait, it's like, 
Wait, so, I'm, so I'm curious if that happened with Kevin. Negative of her perspective and in not prosecuting uh, financial crimes, like. I'm, I'm just asking you, know, you, you why. Know, sorry, you're right. Actually, you're right. It's probably because she was too busy. <laughs> she was too busy doing what the DA should be doing, which is forcibly send children to, to pr uh, forcibly send children to school by threatening to lock up their mothers. She was probably busy elsewhere doing what the DA is supposed to be doing. Sure. Okay. So let's read. Um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Munition spokeswoman Tara Bradshaw, Bradshaw said, state attorney generals have no jurisdiction to investigate federally chartered banks like One West and that banks like One West are regulated exclusively by the federal authorities. When One West pointed that out to the California attorney general's office, they withdrew their subpoena, she said. One West did provide some information to the attorney general's office voluntarily and they did not pursue the matter further. Um, going down, a former senior lawyer in the California Attorney General's office told Politico that staff were divided about the strength of the case. There were indicia of violations, no doubt, but whether we could prove those in court was the question, the person said. And as you said, Kamala Harris voted against the confirmation of this guy for the Treasury thing or whatever. So I don't understand where you're getting this idea that there was like some massive fuck up of her where she just decided not to prosecute because she blocked, she fucking loves the big banks or whatever. I don't see that anywhere. I didn't, I could not she find it. She never talked inside. about how, because she never talked about uh, uh, like not uh, why she decided not to prosecute or how the decision was made. And um, like even in the, even under those circumstances where she was talking about Steve Mnuchin, like she didn't even fucking allude to the fact that um this had happened under her watch that she refused to prosecute also what you said about federal uh mandate is completely incorrect um what are you talking about uh, district attorneys could absolutely have the power when um when they're if i'm maybe i'm mistaken on this but uh state attorney i mean district attorneys absolutely have the fucking um uh, what do you call it absolutely have the power to prosecute when the victims are in their state Okay, I, may, it could just be Politico is just completely posting false information without correcting it. Then I, I'm I'm gonna side with Politico, but I, I guess that's possible. I haven't looked into that. That maybe they just completely and totally lied about this, and Kamala Harris and the entire DA office was was so stupid that they dropped it without knowing that they'd gotten no, bamboozled the, by. Not, again, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I will do this again, I will look into it further. But uh, I believe it was Kamala's decision not to. Uh, prosecute. It not, her team was interested in prosecuting. There were internal memos that showed that um, that, that that urged her to prosecute because there were thousands of uh, violations. Widespread misconduct was the word used. Sure, the, and the misconduct because I, I read that that memo because every single story that you try to find on this, all of it links back to that one intercept report, which I don't even think contacted um, Kamala Harris or or that DA office for comment for whatever reason. But every single thing points back to that intercept. Wait, when, when you when you yeah. read when you, when you read that um, report, the the thousands yeah, they of did. That, the first line of that intercept report is General Kamala Harris on Wednesday vaguely acknowledged the intercepts report about her declining to prosecute, like I I insisting that they obviously like she's obviously aware of it. Okay, I, it, it didn't seem like they'd reached out to her to comment on this article, or maybe they did. Maybe that's what. And she said, "It's a to... decision my office made. We went and follow. We went and we followed the facts and evidence. And it's a decision my office made." Harris said, "We pursued it just like any other case. We go and we take a case wherever the facts lead us." And um, and, sure. it's, and, it, and it sounds to what the memo called widespread misconduct was closed after Harris' office declined to file a civil enforcement action against the bank. Harris' statement on Tuesday doesn't explain how involved she was with the decision to not prosecute or why the decision was made. She also would not say whether the revelations would disqualify Minukin for the uh, position of uh, secretary, treasury secretary. The hearings will reveal if it's disqualifying or not, but certainly has a history that should be critically examined, as do all of the nominees. Harris told The Hill. She added that she would review the background and history of all cabinet nominees, blah, blah, blah. This goes into like the uh, further detail of, of why uh, all the uh, nominees are bad or whatever. Sure. Okay, okay. You realize um, that states okay, you realize that states have like resources that they can allocate to certain cases, right? If they felt like we just went through this with the whole Trump Russian stuff, right? That you can have a lot of stuff that looks real bad, but that the state doesn't always feel like they have like enough evidence to actually bring forth a case and win. That generally when the state doesn't feel like they can win a case, they're not gonna bother doing it. There's not a grand conspiracy there. That happens all the time. Yeah. And I and I criticize uh, in most of those circumstances, like uh, Cy Vance, who failed to prosecute the Trump administration, or not the Trump administration, sorry, Cy Vance, the district attorney in New York, in Manhattan, um, 
said that, uh, I mean, refused to prosecute Ivanka and, and uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, way back when uh, it was exposed that uh, there was some, uh, there was malpractice going on or whatever the fuck in, in the way, in their housing uh, practices. And he refused to prosecute them and then literally got uh, money in campaign contributions after that. Kamala Harris has gotten a fuckload of corporate donations uh, throughout her entire career. Her average donation was, uh, I think it was like, fuck, what was it? Like her small donors were, uh, the average of her small donors, not from like campaign uh, super PACs or whatever, was $200. And she even got money from Mnuchin, which I mentioned in the video. And obviously- Why are you, wait, 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 what? But look, 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 look what you're doing. Look how you're muddying the waters. She got I'm two- I'm not muddying the waters. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. She has a vested she got, interest in maintaining- she got, She's a vested interest in not prosecuting those in power. I mean, you're exa well, on, you're, a lot of fucking money. This is like the race realism argument. Like every time, like you just like brought, you just swish over like a whole bunch of dumb shit. How is this analogous? How are you realism? going to tell me that a two thousand dollar campaign donation five years later to a lady that didn't even vote to confirm him please, is examples please, that she has a vested interest in him? Hearing what I'm saying, I said she gets. Uh, she has, throughout her entire fucking career, gotten a shitload of money from fucking corporate donors. As a matter of fact, that's the overwhelming majority of her fucking donations, including one from Steve Mnuchin, which I will not mention. What are, forward in this what conversation. are, wait, yeah. what are the average donations to like every Democratic candidate? Is that even that much higher than normal? No, that's why I hate the Democratic Party. <laughs> Wait, but then this isn't a critique of Kamala Harris. This isn't a critique of Kamala Harris. This isn't a critique of Kamala Harris. This is just a critique of politics in general. Why are you focusing on Kamala? Oh my God, because Kamala Harris represents business as usual politics. That's literally the point I'm making, that she is a regular Democrat, which is why she's bad. Did you not watch the fucking video? Okay, um, so based on all the statements that I've seen for this, um, here's another one from CNBC. This is um, Ian Sims. Wait, 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 why are we moving past this? You literally said that it was analogous to the arguments that race realists make when I was talking about how Kamala Harris, a regular run-of-the-mill Democrat, uh, is, is getting a fuckload of money from corporate... Uh, uh, fuckload of campaign contributions from corporations in the West. I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know if what... You, because you haven't even demonstrated that. I don't even know if that's true. Just because her average... No, 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 no. Let's not go to the fucking next topic. What do you mean I haven't demonstrated that? The, saying that her average donation is $200 isn't evidence of massive corporate backing. Okay. Kamala Harris donations. I mentioned it in the video. Uh, there is like... Not to mention that, and another thing, when I looked into this whole prosecuting banks and everything, when the United States was looking to settle with, like, after the 2007 financial crisis, Harris, California was one of the only states under Harris that wouldn't agree to a 50-state settlement. She withdrew California from that because she thought that they weren't being held accountable enough. California was the state to lead that under Harris in backing out of that 50-state agreement because she didn't think that they were being held accountable enough for what they'd done. So I mean I don't know I just don't see all this evidence. Wait, I'm that... sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I was looking for I was looking for Kamala Harris's like average campaign contributions. Just sure. To... Well, well, let's find that. We'll find that and we'll wait for that. No, no, no. But go on. What was your point? While I'm looking for that, like I, I, I think I can uh, respond to uh, sure. Your, your that statement. there was when 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 the United States when all 50 states were looking to reach like agreements or whatever for um, holding financial institutions accountable for everything that happened in 2007. California was one of the only states or maybe the first state that led abandoning that 50 state agreement because Harris said that she didn't believe that they were being held accountable enough um, for the crimes that they had committed in the 2007 meltdown. Okay. Yeah, a great, a beautiful talking point from someone who uh, wants to appear as a populist. So, okay. It, it, it literally, it matters not to me what you say when you're running for re-election or what you say. What matters to me is what you do. And if you are doing the things that you're not saying, then fuck that. Who gives a shit? That is the whole point. That, like, this isn't just, like, regular purity testing. This isn't just, like, fucking cancerous, like, Bernie bros shitting on a random person. And I really want to make this clear. It's a track record of a political operative who is interested in becoming the fucking president and will dem and has demonstrated thus far that she will say whatever the fuck she needs to to get to that point. Uh, okay. I'm so confused. Like, what... what... Okay, whatever. Uh, anyway.
Um, yeah, just reading another quote from this um, from the CNBC article. There was no question that One West conducted predatory lending, and Senator Harris believes they should be punished. Ian Sam's national press secretary for Harris's campaign told CNBC in an email, "Unfortunately, the law was squarely on their side, and they were shielded from state subpoenas because they're a federal bank." The California Justice Department's memo noted that the investigation was hampered by our inability to subpoena One West. But she could have filed civil Steve enforcement Mnuchin, action if she wanted to. Uh, and her wife, Heather, have donated almost $465,000 since 1995. Heather gave $2,700 to, to Clinton last May. And since 2000, the couple has given $13,400 to Clinton's Senate and presidential campaigns. Hmm, really interesting. While the majority of her cash this year went to Republicans, the couple doled out funds to Democrats John Kander, who lost the Missouri Senate raise. Not like a, a significant enough uh, money. It's $250. Senate raise Michael Wilde. Defeated New Jersey and Kamala Harris, 2000, the newly elected California senator. Another interesting note, Bloomberg reported Mnuchin could have could save millions in taxes with help from 1989 rule past secretaries such as Henry Paulson. Satisfied conflict of interest rules. He could sell stock without paying taxes on them as he puts money into the gains of the Treasury notes. Uh, okay, that's unrelated. Anyway. Um, wait, what is this about giving to Clinton? Wait, what? what? So wait, so now we're, so now we're going from... Um, Steve gave money to Kamala uh, yes, Harris, and now we're looking at who else he gave money to? In the beginning of this conversation, before my hair started fucking whitening as, as the conversation progressed, Clinton and Kamala Harris are basically the same, except Kamala Harris is black. That's a literal point that I, uh, I brought up for you. I said that they are corporatists. They are in favor of... of uh, Wait, no, stop, no, 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 stop, no, 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 stop, we're going... <laughs> You're doing the race realist thing. We're going over the facts one by one. You can't keep going back to your other level position. Oh, she's all these bad things. We're going over those things as part of this video. Stop painting everything with a broad brush. We're going over the finer facts right now. We don't need okay. to paint with a broad brush. Okay? This idea, yeah, this donation. idea, this idea that like somebody donated to her and also donated to Clinton, therefore she's bad. That's a ridiculous argument. Nobody believes that. We can play that same game with probably any politician and literally declare them to be a Nazi. I have to pee so bad. Hold right. on, we're gonna. I'm gonna pee, but okay. at some point we're gonna we're gonna table this for a brief moment, and then we're gonna fucking uh, get back to it in a second. Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Kamala Harris uh, raised more than 12 million in the first three months of 2019 with big bucks from Hollywood and Silicon Valley. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, God, these fucking articles are so cancerous. They never reveal like the average uh, donors at all. Holy shit. Um, the first term senator spent about 4.3 million in her White House bid, uh, 9 million from her Senate account, 15 million on hand. God, okay, just give me who fucking is giving her the money. Okay, more than a third of her total, more than a third of her total, only like close to a third, more than a third of her total came from donors who gave $200 or less. So almost two thirds of that came from donors who gave more than $200, okay? About 98% of Harris's contributions were less than uh, $100, and the online average donation was $28, according to her campaign. Oh, God, I got pee so bad. Although those figures cannot be independently confirmed because small donations don't need to be reported individually. Uh, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned in the video, as I mentioned in the video, uh, close to two-thirds of her donations, I'm going to pee myself, close to two-thirds of her donations okay, just go, go to the bed. from go to the donors bed. that paid more than $200. <sighs> Which, by the way, when I talked about her Senate, when I talked about her Senate campaign and, and using uh, her Senate funding, uh, you can do that. You can get money from big donors and literally fucking uh, switch it over to your presidential campaign. So technically, those also count. Hold on. I have to pee. Um, anyway, I'll be back in one second. Please continue if you want. Ah. <sighs> What's up, guys? Are you reading Twitch chat? Reading yep. What mic is that? I'm just using that built-in mic in the laptop. Destiny, why pretend to care about the poor? I do care about the poor, my dude. That's why I advocate for policies that I think would benefit them.
I don't know if a son realizes all the steps before a parent is sent to court over their kids oh, yeah, not attending no. school. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. We're okay, back, 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 back. Okay, are you ready? Oh, fuck. All right, are you ready? Yep. Kamala Harris has raised a grand total of $6.9 uh, million dollars uh, in campaign contributions. The number of contributions from individuals of $200 or more is 7,000. 7,000 individuals only gave her $200. Um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, 7,000 individuals gave made up two-thirds Two-thirds of her entire funding. Okay, is he there? Is he still here? Are you here? Uh, yeah, I don't know what this is proving. But... Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you the totals. Paul Weiss, $52,000. University of California, $51,000. Zifrin uh, Brittenham et al., $32,000. AT&T, $29,000. Um, Alphabet, Google, uh, $20,000. Roz Associates, Lowenstein, uh, Mac and Andrews and Forbes, $19,000. Lionsgate, $18,000. Like, CAA, $17,000. My point is, she's getting fucking large donors from the corporations of California and the wealthy in California, so that, which is obviously in line with her perspective of not prosecuting those in positions of power. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't understand at all. Um, how can I thought you're limited on like five thousand dollars for your donation? What do you mean by? Um, the, the way that they get around that, because she also has mentioned that she wants no uh, PAC funding, mm -hmm. uh, because like, uh, you know, another Bernie thing is that you make executives pay uh, a fuckload of money, like executives, like individually pay uh, thousands of dollars. Okay, so what do you have There's to do? Wait, wait. So you're so 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 hold on. So no no no. So, so for some of the companies that you're bringing up, right? And, and so wait wait wait. Can I please finish one fucking point? Oh my god, you just rambled for like twenty minutes. Okay. So these are Bernie Sanders top contributors from 1989 to 2020, right? Four hundred thousand dollars from Alphabet, um, three hundred and sixty thousand dollars from the University of California, one hundred seventy six thousand dollars from Microsoft, right? One hundred forty three thousand dollars from Apple. So am I supposed to take these donations and prove now that Bernie is a massive corporatist as well, or what? Yes. If Bernie's track record showed that, and then beyond that, if Bernie's average can if Bernie's average campaign contribution wasn't significantly less, and the individual donors that gave to Bernie weren't like the the difference is someone at uh, someone who's a Google employee giving fucking twenty seven dollars to Bernie Sanders is entirely different than a fucking executive at Google and and a corporation uh, giving uh, uh, thousands of dollars to uh, what do you call it to Kamala Harris. I love that, though, that you think that there's no context in this. Uh, there's no way to analyze this any other way. I just don't think looking at, like, campaign contributions like is this is... Is it going to be better if I say that you're making, like, a race realist argument here, conflating uh, the two, and, and uh, making it devoid of context completely? Well, no, because I just want to drill down on the individual facts. You're the one that keeps trying to paint, like, a really broad narrative. Like, and I'm only interested in, like, these individual things. Like, what is the acceptable average donation for you to not be a corporate sellout for a Democratic candidate? I'm curious. What does it have to be? Since 200 or whatever is too high, I guess. What? Wait, uh, I'm sorry. What did you say? What does the average donation have to be for you to not be a corporate sellout, I guess? What, what, is, the, what is the number? Is it like over two, 200 <sighs> is too much? Is it less than 100? Is it less than 50? Does it have to be Bernie amount? No, like... people can make, uh, no, people can make $200 donations. I'm saying that more than a third of, like only, only a third of her, like a little bit more than a third of her donations come uh, under two hundred dollars the rest of it the overwhelming majority come from like the two-thirds come from large donations that's my point i don't i just i don't know what the what is the point what well, i'm asking what percentage is good like what does it have to be wait can you actually can you send me the link too that you're looking at i'm just curious uh yeah hold on where the fuck did it go here this is one Also, more importantly than that, again, let's just so we don't, uh, just so don't we don't lose sight of the conversation that we were having. It is literally, uh, I was saying that her donations also follow along with her track record. No, stop, stop doing that! 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 Stop doing that. You can't, you can't, when I, when I getting you on something, okay, which is what's happening, you can't just go, well, but it also matches all these other things. No, it hasn't. We've gone through every other thing you said, and everything's been wrong so far, okay? So you can't just keep saying Wait, every other thing. what are you talking about that I've said that's wrong? The Steve Mnuchin what shit or whatever? The idea that they have the ability to, to prosecute, like, a federal bank? That's not true. The idea that she just randomly chose not to do it because of donations she got later or whatever, it, it, it doesn't, this like, no, really, really people. No, I didn't say people. that she did it as a, as a part of, like, donations that she got what, uh, later. I said that it's... I, I have been very consistent in what I've been saying to you. 
the fact that she got donations from Donald Trump, Stephen Mnuchin, among uh, uh, so many other uh, corporate sponsors uh, to her campaigns throughout the Senate and also uh, uh, during her uh, presidential nomination is indicative of her perspective that she is not interested in uh, holding those in positions of power, especially financial, int uh, uh, financial institutions, uh, and held their feet to the fire. That's literally what I'm saying. <clears throat> okay, let's go in. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So your evidence of her not holding the feet to the fire is who's like donated to her or whatever. Okay, I don't care. So LA Times article, okay? So this is the 50 state thing I was talking about, okay? California Attorney General Kamala Harris will no longer take part in a national foreclosure probe of some of the nation's biggest banks, which are accused of pervasive misconduct and dealing with troubled homeowners. Harris removed herself from talks by a coalition of state attorney generals and federal agencies investigating abusive foreclosure practices because the nation's five largest mortgage services were not offering California homeowners relief commensurate to what people in the state had suffered, Harris told the Times on Friday. The big banks were also demanding to be granted overly broad immunity from legal claims that could potentially derail further investigations into Wall Street rolls in the mortgage meltdown, Harris said. It has been a process of negotiating and sitting at a table in good faith, but ultimately, I have decided that we're going to go our own course and take an independent path, and the decision is because we need to bring relief to Californians that is equal to the pain California experienced, and what is being negotiated now is insufficient, Harris told The Times in an interview. So this is like an example of like actual legislation, actual big things that Harris was involved in, where it seems like she was advocating on behalf of like at least the people of California. Not to mention the fact that Harris was the sole author of the bill that went on to make illegal the thing that, that Steve Munich and guy actually did to, to fucking get rich. The, um, the, Cali the, Cali the, the, the California Homeowners Bill of Rights, which made the dual tracking shit illegal, which is how One West was cheating homeowners in the first place. That dual tracking thing, which I think is what let them like, um, it let them, it let them like post date documents so they could foreclose faster or some shit or whatever, right? She literally yeah, authored the- not just One West, by the way. That was like common practice with it. Uh, sure. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. She authored a bill that literally made that practice illegal. And okay, she packed her state- I understand. At so where is this idea? Where is this huge? The Obama, uh, I don't care about Obama. Why are you bringing up Obama? I don't just care. Listen, just listen. The reason why I brought up the Obama example rather than a fucking hypothetical or an analogy like you do. I'm you literally bringing up actual things that have happened. It is another demonstration of the Obama administration instilling regulations, but not actually prosecuting the fucking criminals in the first place. That's my point. And Kamala Harris did not do that. You say that it is because she did not have the mandate. I'm saying that she did. Okay, well, I, I, I mean, I'm really surprised that nobody else has come out like saying that she had a mandate and didn't follow it through. I guess I, I don't understand. You, so you think that her whole, the whole office just lied when they said that they can't prosecute, that everybody was just making that up and nobody like figured it out, or? Um, I don't know what the exact details of how uh, this is not being more talked about. No, I, I don't know. I can't speak to why the media refuses to cover certain elements of, of, of I mean, uh, the track record of certain campaigns. I mean, I, I guess I don't understand. Do we, like, it seems like it seems that, like it seems like they that, like sometimes the media just doesn't really uh, cover this sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know. I, don't so I mean, I, I, I can, if we want to appeal to like media conspiracy, I mean, we can do that. But it seems more Wait, likely. The article that you can you send me the article that you're reading off of? For what? Um, the the Kamala Harris uh, uh, prosecution, um, like uh, failure to prosecute. Here's the because I mentioned that they had civil enforcement to do so, um, and 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 that uh, she failed to do that, but. Harris delivered the news. That no, no, hold on. This is, this is about the 50 big banks thing. I have to go back and look because I got 50 million fucking things. Wait, what is this? Yeah, what the fuck? Um, this is about California withdrawing from the 50 state coalition. Okay. The, the CNBC article. Wait, hold on, real fast. What was the initial claim about Kamala's donations? Um, in my video? No, no, about what you just said about percentages or whatever. I said that two thirds are um, uh, two thirds of our donos come from 
Uh, I mean, not two thirds. Yeah, two thirds of our donos come from uh, more than two hundred dollars. Okay, even more of Bernie's comes from so sixty three thousand donation or sixty three thousand dollars of the four hundred fifty thousand raised by Bernie in quarter one so far has been from people under two hundred dollars. So even Bernie okay. doesn't pass this metric that you're setting. Okay. Um, again, like I said, it's it's a little different when it comes to a person who has uh, openly advocated for the same fucking shit his entire career. So then why bring it up at all if that doesn't matter? What do you mean it doesn't matter? Of course it you matters. You literally just said the you percentage of donations. If it's an you... individual who's... If it's an individual where, where the average donation is 18 fucking dollars... Wait, wait, can you repeat that again? Okay, so apparently... Can you repeat what you said again? Sure. So $63,000 of the 450000 raised by Bernie in quarter one came from people contributing less than $200. So that means like 350 k or whatever... Uh, of his or 380k so most of the money that bernie's raised so far has come for people donating over 200 dollars. wait i have to i have to look this up i i don't think you're i don't think you're correct because i think his average is like literally fucking um wait wait wait, wait. are you framing it as like in this insanely fucking narrow time frame too am i crazy I'm going by donations. What do you mean? Under the current election cycle? I'm not going to include what was a past election, okay, of course. Okay, under the current election cycle. Wait, hold on. What? Hold on. Here is the FEC link. No, he keeps. Oh shit! I keep clicking on the same one. He's saying under you over. What? Hold on. So eight hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars raised from January first to March uh, to March thirty-first. You have to right? download the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, this is annoying. Hold on. <sighs> Dude, by the way, like Bernie Sanders has raised eighteen million dollars from individual donations averaging $18, just for the record. Okay. Like his average donation is $18. Let's see what Kamala Harris's is. Wait, I thought you just said this doesn't matter. We were going by track record. No, track record is still incredibly important, but I'm trying to understand where you're coming from with uh, the numbers that you put together and I'm seeing something different. I I'm downloading the Excel spreadsheet, but I don't have Excel. He raised 18 million last quarter and the average donation is uh, $18. Which by the way, like I said, track record is still incredibly important. Uh, he's saying under $200, you were saying over $200. Oh, wait, you said that, wait, can you, fuck, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again with what you said? Uh, uh, Bernie's, uh, individual donors. I mean, uh, Bernie's donors. Okay. Uh, here's Bernie's the question. Hold on. Here, here, okay. Here, here, here's the question. We have to make sure that we're like looking at the same. Wait, no, 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 no. Hold on. Because I said very specifically, I said Kamala Harris, two thirds of her campaign contributions come from, uh, donations that are over $200. When you say campaign contributions, do you mean total amount of money raised or the number of contributions? Because, for instance, I could have 10 people contribute one dollar to me and one person contribute a million dollars to me and say the majority of my contributions came from poor people. But what does that mean? Like the number of people that donated or the actual amount of money that you raised? These are two fundamentally different questions. Do you understand? Um, yeah, I do understand. I was giving you uh, I was giving you individual donors. And you, I think, were telling me, like, what percentage of the donations were coming from? I, I don't know. Where the money is coming from, sure. Okay. So you said 
sorry. What? Fuck. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. My I'm I'm on. I've been on since uh, two uh, two p.m. My brain is like I haven't eaten yet. My brain is starting to fucking malfunction. But um, I said that. Bernie Sanders is, fuck, if only I could find the average of Kamala Harris. She says that her online donations are $28, but the online donations is not what's important. I want to know what the overall average is. Does that make sense? Sure. This is dishonest. The average encodes the number of people who donated. I study stats. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Kamala Harris raises close to 12 million in three months. Bernie raised uh, 18. Oh, do, 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 do. more than any candidate aside from. She has pulled in large sums from online donors while also aggressively raising money on traditional fundraising circuit, an approach that Mr. Buttigieg is also employing with great success. The Harris campaign said Friday that she received donations from more than 279,000 people during the second quarter and raised more than $7 million of her total online. The campaign said that its average donation is $40, lower than the 49 average reported by the Biden campaign, but higher than the $18 average cited by the Sanders team. Okay, Campaigns so often point to small average donations as evidence that they're attracting a large pool of grassroots supporters. So um, this doesn't really the campaign seem... said it received 63,000 in the first 24 hours after the debate. More than half of whom were first time donors to her presidential bid. It was the best online fundraising uh, day of her campaign so far. Um, it's uh, fuck. It's really. So like reading this Newsweek article, Bernie Sanders, since the launch of his presidential bid, the Sanders campaign said 99% of donations were $100 or less and currently has 30 million cash on hand. Um, they received 900,000 donations. In his first quarter, Sanders raised a little more than 18 million, roughly from 900,000 donations with an average donation of $20. Um, <clears throat> since the launch of Kamala Harris's campaign, 98% of contributions to Harris were less than $100. And her average donation, according to the campaign, was $39. Wait, I told you that... Wait, you told me that Bernie Sanders... Am I fucking crazy? Am I, am I like, misunderstanding the excel spreadsheet or does it say that the overwhelming majority of bernie sanders is um like individual donors have donated less than uh what do you call it less than two hundred dollars okay this is what i'm okay this is what i'm trying to illustrate the difference between these two things okay let's say that i have one million dollars okay uh, let's say that 10 people gave me one dollar one person gave me a million dollars i can make two different statements about this money that i have i can say most of my contributions came from poor people because nine of them donated one dollar or i could say most of my contributions came from wealthy people because 99.99 percent of my money came from one person but these are two fundamentally different claims do you understand okay yes so i so i don't know so I, the claims that I make, I'm just linking articles that say these things. I, I don't know what you're comparing for, for Bernie. Here's a Newsweek article that I have that seems to be comparing like similar numbers. This right here, it doesn't seem like they're that far off from one another. Sanders is saying 99% of his donations were $100 or less. Kamala Harris is saying that 98% of her contributions are $100 or less. It doesn't seem like that big of a difference. Kamala Harris says 98% of her contributions are $100 or less? Yes. Wait. Oh, hold on. Can you send me that article? Yeah, I sent it to you. Is it the Newsweek one? Yep. So scroll down to Kamala Harris. Okay. Democratic crew two fundraising numbers, blah, blah, blah. Or is it just in second quarter or is it overall? Oh, I, it sounds like second quarter fundraising levels. The average donation, according to the campaign, since the launch of her campaign. So this is from the launch of her campaign. 98% of contributions to Harris were less than $100. Okay. Wait, so... Why would Kamala Harris's average contribution be so much uh, higher than Bernie Sanders' is then? Is it because Bernie Sanders has, I mean, Bernie Sanders has more uh, individual donors than Kamala Harris, certainly. 
Okay, I, so I don't know where your numbers are coming from. I'm just, I'm just reading this Newsweek article, which I'm assuming is correct, but it's saying that um, the average donation according to Campbell's campaign is $39. The average donation according to Bernie's campaign um, is $20. Okay, hold on. What the fuck? Destiny, Hassan's point was about her Senate campaign? Oh, was it? I have no idea if that was... Like, I think that the problem, this guy's trying to read me, like, how stats work. I don't understand what he's saying, but I think I understand what he's, like, getting at. But, like, the problem is, like, if I have, like, 1,000 people that donate $1 to me, right, and I have, like, one person or I've got, like, 10 people that donate, like, $5,000 to me, my average donation is going to be massively skewed because those two people are like donating so much more money. Does that like a few people can like, it's not like a normal distribution or like if your average donation is $50, that means that some donate 20, a lot donate 50, some donate like 80. It, it, it doesn't distribute like a, like a normal distribution would. It's going to be massively disproportionate at both ends. Most likely. That's my guess. I could be wrong on that, uh, but, but I'd be shocked if it was like a, if it was a normal distribution in terms of our campaign um, donations go. I'm guessing that most people probably donate a very little amount, and the people that donate a lot probably donate a lot more. Apparently, this is called a chi squared distribution. Chi, it's called Chi squared. Oh, my bad. You muted Hassan? Did I? No. Wait, hello? I think he's muted. Or you, maybe you pushed on push to talk? Can oh. you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Hello. Okay, I don't know what the fuck happened when you were talking about uh, when we were talking about uh, the donations. Um, by the way, thank you, Chopo, for the raid. Um, okay. Uh, Bernie Sanders, fourteen percent large donor, fifty-eight percent, fifty-eight point point one percent large individual donors for uh, for uh, Kamala Harris. Wait, fourteen percent large donor. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at open secrets and the summarization for, um, well, their Senate campaigns, and I believe also for the, um, uh, for the presidential campaign. And it's telling me, and I can send you these summarizations as well, but it's telling me that Kamala Harris's small individual contributions uh, under $200 is 33%. Her large individual contrib contributions, which are 58%, um, she has a very little pack. Wait, 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 wait. So what does this mean like the percentage of people that donate or the percentage of the money that she has is comprised of? Um, the the percentage of her donation come from uh, large individual contributions, like 58 percent of her donate. That's what we were talking about before as well. You see what I'm saying? Like I, when I when I brought up Bernie Sanders. And, and the difference between uh, Kamala Harris, I told you that Bernie Sanders' small individual contributions under $200 uh, is at 73.7%. His large individual contributions is at 14%.
versus Kamala Harris, her the amount of money that she's raised from large individual contributions is at 58 percent, uh, almost 60, and her uh, small individual contributions, which are under 200 dollars, yeah, uh, is okay, 33.8 so... percent. So across the board, she has uh, raised like uh, an infinitely more amount of money than Bernie said. Like not more money overall. Uh, well, even more money actually, but. Okay, so like, um, let me, okay, so. Okay, let, that's look what at, I was trying to say. Well, no, no, I, but it, it doesn't say anything, but this is starting to get into like kind of complicated number shit. Here, scroll Wait, down to. Wait, why? It, it, but like. The, I'll explain why. Just open these two links and scroll down to where you see small individual contributions. Okay, so. So you see where it says small individual contributions on both of these. Uh huh. Okay, so here it shows that Kamala Harris, of all the money that she's raised, 34% of it comes from small contributions, correct? Mm hmm. From Bernie Sanders, it says that his small individual contributions have made up 73%, right? Yes. Okay, but these numbers can still be, firstly, I don't even know if we still care about these numbers because you said earlier, but we'll say we do, okay? These numbers could still okay, be but, but, but like massively having, skewed. No, no. because you brought it up, because you brought it up, okay? But what I'm saying is that, okay, but let me finish, oh my god, let me finish, I can't finish. Okay, what I'm saying is that- You can go down this route, and now you're saying it doesn't matter because you realize that fucking, that you're wrong, that you totally misrepresented Kamala Harris's funding? What the fuck? Come on, Destiny. I'm trying to be as charitable as possible to you this entire time while you're fucking throwing up insane analogies. Okay, no, I am not. Okay, stop. Okay, are you listening to me? Okay. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, on the Kamala Harris thing, let's say she has 4,000 people that donated $1, okay? Okay. Okay. On the Bernie Sanders thing, let's say that he has... Um, so if Kamala Harris has 1,000 people that donated $4, Bernie Sanders could have, let me break out a calculator, he could have had, fuck it, he could have had um, 150 people that donated $100. Okay. And you're saying that... No, 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 don't tell me what I'm saying. I'm telling you exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that these numbers don't necessarily mean that somebody has, like, a wider support from, like, a, a, a smaller base. That on Cam... I, and it might yeah, be the case. I'm just saying that, like, on Camelas, there could be $4,000, $1... Compared to the average, compared to the average and the difference between the average, don't you think that it's understandable that Bernie Sanders has sig a significant more amount of individual campaign contributions? Like I don't even. I don't know. Do I don't a even know. Conspiracy of fucking millionaires who are spending two hundred dollars. It's time? not a conspiracy of millionaires. It's basic math. Okay. It's not. It's. We're not talking about amount of people here that are donating. We're just talking about the size of the donations. Okay. A hundred fifty people could donate a hundred dollars, and that will significantly boost your small individual contributions. And five thousand people could donate one dollar, and it won't make much of a difference there compared to the small individual contributions. Because we're not looking at the number of people donating. We're looking at the at the. Um, at the average amounts of money that are being donated compared to the total pool of money that's on hand. That's why in that Newsweek article, apparently Bernie said that 99% of his contributions come from people that donated, um, what was it, less than $100? And Kamala Harris said 98%, right? It wasn't like that significant of a difference. These numbers are really complicated. I don't think this matters. The reason I'm saying it doesn't matter is because you earlier said it didn't matter. But if you want to focus on it, we can. But I'm just saying that these numbers don't necessarily say what you're saying they're saying. Does that make sense? But, the, but these stats what don't do you like... What think is happening with Kamala Harris's campaign that is entirely different than Bernie Sanders' is for some reason where small individual donors are... Like, how are they getting around it? No one's like, getting around anything. What do you mean? Because you're saying that... Okay. Kamala Harris has raised $4 million from uh, small individual uh, contributors, right? Under $200. It makes up 33%. Um, Bernie Sanders, on the other hand has raised $15 million from uh, small individual uh, uh, donors. What do you think is the difference there? Like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, do you think that there is a, do you think that there is like, 
I think that both people have a lot of support. I think that both people have a lot of support from small donors. Since the launch of his presidential bid, the Sanders campaign said 99% of their donations. We can't look at the median, guys, because we don't fucking know. We don't care about that. That um, Bernie Sanders, um, Bernie Sanders has 99% of his uh, donations as $100 or less. Kamala Harris said 98% of her donations were $100 or less. So, I mean, it seems like both of them have, like, the majority of their, the number of people that donate are people that don't throw as much money at them. That seems to be the case. Can you explain? Wait, but I'm not under, maybe I'm not understanding, but, like, what do you think is, like, do you, what do you think is happening on the Bernie Sanders, like, hypothetical, what do you think is happening on, on the Bernie Sanders campaign where, like, uh, where, where are people maxing out? Like, are people maxing out with like uh, smaller contributions? That's not happening on the Kamala Harris uh, uh, campaign, which, by the way, uh, would still you would still have to max out at what? What is it like two thousand uh, or, or was it two thousand three hundred dollars? I don't I don't know. I haven't looked at those numbers. I'm just saying that, like, these numbers don't necessarily, like, prove, like, some grassroots thing. I, I, I said that both track record and donations matter. We're talking on the donation side, and you're giving me, like, you're, you're telling me that you don't know what, like, you're saying that it could be that the Kamala Harris campaign uh, has, has gotten, uh, has only raised $4 million from uh, small contributions, and then the large individual contributions could be still small. Uh, uh, what I'm saying, okay, um, your initial argument was that um, grassroots, like whether or not you have grassroots support and whether or not you've got the policy to back it. So we've gone over arguing different Kamala Harris's policies, which I don't think are as bad as you make them sound. Now we're arguing over funding sources. And from the earlier thing that you cited, wait, that the earlier right thing right that you cited made it sound like Kamala Harris, like all of her donors were wealthy. You said something like two thirds of her money came from big donors or whatever. Which, I said two, no, I said two thirds of her campaign contributions comes from uh, over $200 donations. That's sure. literally but that doesn't, factually correct. Yeah, We're but, looking at it right in front of us. Sure, but that doesn't say whether or not most of the people donating are wealthy or not. So you're saying that like wealthy people are fucking donating to burn? Like what? That, that makes no sense. Uh, am I crazy? Like, or are you saying that like wealthy people are secretly fucking donating to Bernie Sanders with like individual contributions despite the fact that like it seems like they hate him, including uh, Dan. Okay. What I'm saying is that saying that Kamala Harris gets most of her money from wealthy people doesn't say that most of the people donating to her are wealthy. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Here's right. an example. Let's say 1,000 people donate to me. One guy donates a thousand dollars, and 999 all donate one dollar. Right? In that case, do I say I could say 99% of my donors donated a small amount? However, 50% of my money came from large donors. Does that make sense? Yes, but what I care about is what percentage of your money came from. Uh, what, like, how much of the money that you raised come from large donors? That's what I care about. But you can make an argument for for both cases here. Right? Maybe I maybe no, you don't just can't because Bernie Sanders is large individual contributions are fourteen. No, 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 no. What you just said. No. Kamala Harris is large individual contributions is at sixty percent. You can't say the argument doesn't work because it wouldn't help Bernie Sanders. That's what you just said. <laughs> okay, that, that's not an argument. Okay. Wait, what are you? Am I am I losing my mind? Like, what am I looking at? Do you think that like, unless, unless you think that like poor people are fucking. No, oh, it's not. That's not all I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you have a thousand people that donate to you, if one person donates a thousand dollars, okay, and the 999 of them donate one dollar, you can both see, you can make two statements. You can say most of my support is from poor people. 99.9% .9 of people donated one dollar. Or you could say, well, that's bullshit. Half your money came from rich people. Matter. But it doesn't matter. We're not talking about that. What? So what are we talking, talking about? about we're talking about what percentage of your contribution, how much of the money that you've raised, what percentage of the totality of the money that you've raised come from large individual contributions compared to small individual contributions. That is literally my main point. That has always been my main point. And you've been fucking going on these like weird, uh, different fucking uh, journeys, basically, telling me that like the FCC report shows that like Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, small individual contributions are actually... <coughs> Bernie Sanders' small individual contributions are like uh, much larger than we uh, previously thought or something. Like you said, like two thirds of it 
uh, come from large individual contributions similar to Kamala Harris. Like, I'm confused. I'm, we're all over the fucking place. When the only argument that I've, I've made thus far, the original point that I made is that the track record and individual donations, uh, the, the track record and how much of your money that you're raising come from large individual contributions is absolutely indicative of whether or not uh, someone is, uh, uh, like, whether or not someone is someone I'm interested in. Okay. Um, so, okay. Am I wrong about this? I, I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't think it matters, like, because I don't think it matters, like, where the, where the, like, if most of your donors are donating $2, that somehow that means you're, like, somehow more, I, I don't know, it's just not that important of a thing to me, but... I, ju I just didn't like the framing earlier where you made it sound like all of the people donating to Kamala Harris were these rich people um, because of the way that you made it sound earlier and that like all the people donating to Bernie were poor people. Like, I don't know. That's not. Oh, so you're saying that it's it's inappropriate of me to say that like uh, someone making a $200 donation or more is is uh, indicative that they are, uh, what do you call it? Indicative that they are uh, wealthy. I, I don't even remember the original point at this point. Was the first thing I you said, said? I said the overwhelming majority. She has a lot of corporate sponsors. And that she, the overwhelming majority of her campaign was funded by large individual contributions, which the data backs. I said that more than, uh, I said that two thirds of her, uh, I said that two thirds of her campaign is funded by large individual contributions. That's what I said. And, and that's what I've been saying. And that's what I'm going to keep saying. I don't know. I, that's the fact. Um, Okay, I mean, I'll dig into the numbers later. I mean, it's incredibly fucking complicated. I just are you not like what? You... I, I, I don't know. Like these, like these sweeping things. It's like, oh, seventy-two percent of blah 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 came from under two hundred dollars. Like these, these numbers could be skewed like so fucking hardcore, like in one way or another. Like it's like insane. Like apparently, like people are telling me based on this uh, on the FVC site that like over eight thousand people have maxed out like five thousand dollars donations to Bernie Sanders. And on Kamala Harris, people are saying like it's that number is like half or less than half. So I so I don't yeah, know, dude. Like. Fucking psychos are uh, uh, love Bernie Sanders and like are giving so much money to Bernie Sanders. Like, do you think that there's a do you think there's wait 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 so what the like wealthy people? Do you think there's honestly a conspiracy of wealthy people who are just like secretly maxing out with under two hundred dollar donations to Bernie Sanders and and like that's why he's secretly propped up? Uh, no. Okay, then, what, like, why is that argument even uh, a necessity when we're talking about how much of the uh, how much of Bernie Sanders' donations are coming from large individual? Uh, I don't know. Donors? Okay, we're moving on from this topic. This is cancer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, was there? Did Kamala Harris actually support three strike laws? I couldn't find that anywhere. Maybe I didn't look hard enough. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I found an article that said that in the early 2000s in California, a person could find themselves in prisons for quite a while for relatively minor crimes because of the three strikes laws. While it was implemented differently across different states, the general idea was that a person who committed three serious crimes would serve blah, 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 blah. Um, the three strike law was especially harsh in California for a few reasons. For instance, misdemeanors often counted towards a person's three strikes. People were charged twice the same crime, et cetera, et cetera. As Attorney General of San Francisco, Kamala Harris pushed the state on a path to easing up on the three strikes rule. She did this by refusing to prosecute individuals for life sentences unless their third crime was considered serious or violent. Hey, it's that discretion everything you're talking about earlier. By 2012, the state as a whole voted for the same change through a referendum. Um, so I'm curious, where does this idea that she supported like three strike crimes come from? Uh, okay. Um, hold on. I have to go back to, I don't even fucking remember what I said. Holy shit. Ay, ay, ay. I am so defeated, dude. Like you, you've owned me into oblivion, Destiny. Uh, I'm, I'm at. Uh, it's ten thirty. I still haven't eaten anything yet. <clears throat> what did I say? Okay, listen. I love you very much. We don't have to go through this whole thing, but like, no, 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 no. no. The, I, I initially, talking. listen, listen. Like a few weeks ago, we got into a big argument because I said that I felt like people that hardcore pull for Bernie will pull shit way the fuck out of their ass to shit all over other Democratic candidates, and I got a lot of heat from your community and my community in regards to that because apparently you look into people like Biden way more than I do. And I have no business saying something like that when I've only looked into a few points of yours that I disagreed with. So when this Kamala Harris video came out, I decided to spend my three-hour flight looking at every single point of the video, and most of these have been like pretty grossly misrepresented on like at least one point so i mean like that, i guess that's just my frustration that there's like 35 minutes of like these totally random yes, you're assertions right. <clears throat> you're right i i'm i'm uh, 
I'm grossly misrepresenting uh, all of the positions that we walk through one by one, including uh, the donor stuff. Uh, I don't know about the donor stuff. I'll give you that one if you want. I don't know. About, I, don't, I don't care about the donor stuff. You brought that point up, but I'll give it to you if you want. I don't care. I don't care about the donor thing. Destiny. It doesn't fucking matter. You are like you're ha you're engaging in like some of the most insane fucking semantics arguments because I feel like you're butt hurt by the fact that your audience said that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like it, 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 it honestly, I'm sorry, but it literally sounds like that because like we you we agree on fundamentally every single fucking thing that you have brought up and you have exhausted me with insane hypotheticals the entire fucking time. You're the one saying that I never like. Exist. And, it, and, it's, and it's shocking to me that you're making this seem – numerous times you made it uh, uh, analogous to race realists in the way that they fucking argue. And, it, it, like, it's crazy. You I literally – you're, you're telling me that I'm giving you Hussein hypotheticals. And earlier you were the one saying that a woman that calls the police because she's worried about two men falling in an alleyway, that she should be considered partially responsible if they get deported by ICE. You're saying – like, how are you the one saying that I'm making the insane statements? That, that schools ought to dismiss all, like, resource officers. I, that said, they I wouldn't do that. That, oh, come on. That's such a weasel. Wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I said that it's entirely different and it un understandable that she fucking uh, would call the police it, under those circumstances. I wouldn't personally do it. I've been in similar situations where I haven't done Wait, it. Wait, how is this and relevant to anything? She's so partially responsible, but ultimately, she is not, like, ultimately, it's not the same as you fucking calling the cops from your house because you saw random people sitting outside. That's literally the, okay. That was the here's my argument. okay. Here's here's my challenge for you. Okay, you for, changing the perspective. Like, I'm not changing the perspective at all. I li listen. Think I'm a listen. Dumbass. I'm not for this conversation anyway. You don't I, have to go above and beyond. I didn't strawman my position uh, and and come up with insane hypotheticals and then fucking gaslight me in the end of the conversation by saying, "Oh, like you said that a woman calling the cops would be bad because you uh, did." This is why I specifically the, the reason this is why I specifically asked you these questions with with absolute razor fucking accuracy. I specifically asked you if a woman called the cops because somebody was chasing her or because there were two people in an alleyway that she felt like they were posted threat to her. If she called the cops and they got deported is she partially responsible for that and you said yes that i specifically yeah. asked you that yeah okay I said yeah that, i said that she shouldn't i said that she i wouldn't do that no why are you saying i wouldn't do that this is a train wrecks answer you literally give me a train wrecks answer right now oh oh god wait, no no it's like wait no 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 this literally reminds me this literally reminds me when someone's like so you're because saying that no 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 you're saying you're saying regardless. how is it a bullshit it was random people but the fucking school is that was the main point. So, yes, on your fucking faulty ass analogy, I said yes, okay? Oh, wait, so how is this an, how is this an insane analogy? Are you saying that somebody's never called the cops when they're- I don't even know what I said. I hope someone can fucking clip it, okay? I fucking hate this shit. Every time we have this conversation, you like, uh, like, I, I know I, I, I cut you off quite frequently. I know that, right? But so do you. But for some fucking weird reason, the entire thing turns into Hassan kept talking over Destiny and Hassan was like so fucking dumb or morally lucky in an instance where like we literally agree and you've done some of the most disingenuous debate tactics that I'm finally going to start fucking calling out every single time that you do it. It is like talking to Ben Shapiro, literally. Okay, if you want, I would be curious. At the end of this, you can Thank go you through this. Thank you for the raid, by the way. Fat raid. You can go through this video. You can watch it on the stream. If you feel like I used a disingenuous debate tactic or if I straw banned you or if I did something bad, fucking quote it in the video and we can go back and we can visit it at every point. I think that every analogy I use was on point. I think that every hypothetical I use is on point. But if you feel like I've engaged in some disingenuous, you know, creepy Jewish mastermind tactic or some shit, go back, Wait, find what? it, and then point it out to me and, and we can go over it. I never it, said okay? that you're, you're, what? I, I didn't say you did creepy Jewish tactics, okay? Or you chill. Oh, sorry. I heard, the ben, I heard the Ben Shapiro comparison and the creepy debate tactics, but... Okay, that doesn't... When I say Ben Shapiro's argument uh, style, uh, it, it was adopted... I by know that you didn't debate mean debate Jewish. I'm just kidding. I know I know you weren't making anti-Semitic comments. I'm sorry. I was being edgy. Okay. Listen, I love you. <laughs> if we could keep talking about it if you want, but... <laughs> No, it's okay. We'll we'll continue this. We'll continue this debate in, in part two. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll yeah, that, just so you so you're prepared next time for the part two. My other points were you said that Kamala Harris was like shielding the Catholic Church or wouldn't prosecute the Catholic Church from sex scandals. What she wasn't doing is she wasn't allowing the um, her department to release old files related to people that I think had been accused of of sexual crimes in the past quite a bit different. You can argue it's semantics or whatever. Um, there is that. Then you said something about her how having trans women refused medical care. I don't know if Harris is involved in that or not. I couldn't find anything about that. Yeah, um, no, she, she did. Uh, okay, it's, yeah. uh, she, she refused to give, she refused to sign off on gender confirmation 
surgery for uh, certain trans individuals under. Okay, yeah, I get. I'll look for that again because I couldn't find that. Um, there were weird things about sex workers. Well, I, but I'm sure what? you're gonna be like, well, they were criminals, so they don't deserve it, <laughs> like or something. At this point, I feel like you're. <laughs> like okay I, I also invite if you think i've said anything at all during this discussion where i've been inconsistent on my moral system i absolutely invite you to point it out because i think everything i've said has absolutely been very okay. rigid and, and from start to finish we can I go know, but but i think it's not a i think it's not necessarily a, a productive conversation to go over your argumentative style uh and, and it's just more semantics when I don't think it's semantics. You're saying agree. semantics because you're saying like school is the same as police force. And when I challenge you on that, you're saying, well, that's just semantics. It's not semantics. It's absolutely necessary to the conversation. Like it wasn't even, dude. Holy shit! It wasn't even fucking the main point of that conversation. The main point of that was like, um, like you you picked that part, which I said I could have reworded in a better fashion from the jump. And then you fucking went off on like a two hour conversation that we had over over whether like the schools were were uh, uh, re responsible in the, the truancy argument too. holy shit, dude. Anyway, look, we can like I said, we'll we'll talk about it again. We'll rewatch it or something. I'm sorry for keeping you up this late. But um, yeah, OK, well, I'll, I'll go over the debate uh, in the on my chat and you can too i'm sure there's going to be like 7500 fucking uh threads on your don't delete any of them even if they're shitty towards me don't do not fucking delete them I want what to most of the threads. threads on my subreddit are overwhelmingly positive of you most of the ones posted on your subreddit relentlessly shit on me what do you why are you victim ending yourself <laughs> no 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 i'm wait, why did you just I say know. that wait then why did you just I'm act like you're going to be the victim when my of my feelings don't delete them because I know that most of them will probably shit on you instead. So don't delete those either. <laughs> okay. I want to look through your audiences. Uh, your audience is way better, and mine is as well. Very good at like picking apart our debates and, and, uh, and, and having a, like a, offering good uh, post analysis. Okay. All right. Anyway. I'll see you later, buddy. Peace out. All right. Peace, dude. And then you think this is funny somehow, and then you accuse. I'm sorry, are you being real or not? I can't, I honestly can't tell if you're trolling or not. Now you push it.